I'm not able to say it's not in uh, uh, real time color. That's the reason why I'm not able to pick it up. <laughs> now we are able. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. அப்ரகாம் <laughs> 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 Okay. Yeah, now YouTube live streaming is going on. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I, I think uh, we are waiting for because uh, it's now around 221 people mm-hmm. have joined. Mm-hmm. So, we yeah. are, uh, we are, let us wait another uh, fight in five minutes. Well, yeah, yeah. It's not that uh, uh, yeah. three almost. It, yes, sir. Because uh, 1,500 people will be we starting a little bit late. Yeah. Three actual yeah. short time. So, we can uh, do three, five because uh, we yes. just started a little late actually. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. uh, once 500 uh, participants joins immediately we can uh, uh, formally we can start this. Yeah, it's almost two two thirty four two thirty five. Yeah, it is two fifty six now. Okay. Huh. In my computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Two fifty six. Uh, uh, yeah, Narayanan has joined. Good. Yeah. For in, for benefit for information of all of you uh, and uh, ma'am. our yes. notification of our webinar has reached to around 20 25 countries oh, nice <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. you can you, you can do it no uh, there is yeah. no problem uh, uh, yeah. uh, from your yeah. in the sense in the sense no you can do whatever you like yeah <laughs> yes public institutes <laughs> like what so, we do that's so important so, yeah <laughs> uh, government and uh, squash government no it's very difficult Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, with great like difficulty, we, yeah. sir, yeah. with great difficulty, six months yes. of preparation, yes. we conducted international conference of banana in which 400 people participated. Yes. Sir, yeah. without much expense, uh, without much cost, yeah. we are reaching uh, for four uh, international conference. ICB is conducted at yeah. one time now. Thousand two hundred people at a time, <laughs> and everyone is actively listening here. Ah, yeah. that's it. Yes, this is, this is quite uh, good and money saving, yeah. economical. Yeah. Mm. you know yeah. very and, true uh, very true hmm. and automatically you can record everything we can recall <laughs> yes sir yeah it's in live uh, youtube so any time anyone can uh, we have kept it a public hmm. uh, the previous one uh, value addition and entrepreneurship development uh, uh, anyone can go at any time they can do the live streaming two hours uh, yeah. youtube uh, video yes. is there mm-hmm. so anyone can see any time even after after closing also we have kept it in public Uh, 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 mode only, so yes. anyone can view that. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah. No displacement. Uh, I mean, most of the people are staying in their own house or in the office. Uh, but th- yes. this is the best uh, best way. You know. Crisis <laughs> yes. will, 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 will give no. Will throw a lot of lights. You no, know, like how to yes. manage. Yes. Innovation will come only when you have the crisis. <laughs> <laughs> very true rightly said samna <laughs> shiva good afternoon sir good afternoon sir so dr arjun singh is very strong scientist oh uh, some sound is coming i think one of our scientists sound is coming yeah oh i think mm. hello ஆ சொல்லுங்க நீங்க அங்க போயிருங்க ப்ளீஸ் கைண்ட்லி கோ தேர் பிஎஸ் ரூம் ஆமா நீங்க க்ளோஸ் பண்ணி அங்க போயிருங்க யூ ஹேவ் காட் டைம் யூ கேன் ஜாயின் ஓகே ஹூ ஹஸ் ப்ராப்ளம் டாக்டர் செல்வராஜன் டாக்டர் குமார் ஐ டோல்ட் ஹிம் ஆல்ரெடி கோ அண்ட் யூஸ் கமிட்டி கால் திஸ் ஒன் ஓகே சோ ஹி சேஸ் நவ் இட் இஸ் நாட் கெட்டிங் இட் யூ கேன் டேக் தி ஹெல்ப் ஆஃப் ஹவர் பீப்பிள் பட் ஐ டோல்ட் ஹிம் டு ஜாயின் இன் தி ஃப்ரம் கமிட்டி கால் Mm-hmm. Actually, you know. uh, but in fact, uh, for Kumar and uh, uh, Ravi also, we had in the morning uh, some session. Mm-hmm. Okay. Some mm-hmm. demo we had. Mm-hmm. Some small problems we sorted out actually. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, doctor, so, uh, doctor, the video is not coming. Just... Uh, your video, you are not getting your video? Yeah, yeah, video yeah. Part? Just a minute, I don't know. Oh, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm, uh, doing it uh, twice, thrice. You see the left, left side, uh, you can see the... 
Dr. Ravi, can you see left side? That yeah, video? Yeah, left, uh, left side window. Yeah, that, um, okay. that audio is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, video settings, I don't know what is the problem. Video setting, there is a problem. Yeah. Okay, one minute. I will, I will just, uh, one minute. I will ask uh, someone to come and help you. Uh, okay. Or you can take my laptop and use it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, morning, it was all very good. It yeah, yeah. Very nice it was day. everything is okay, fine, but I don't know now what happened to that video. Ah, uh, yeah. Dr. Ravi, can you go to your email and ah. where I have put uh, panelists join like that? Okay, okay, I'll just go again. Mm. Not, the one, not yeah. the one that YouTube link. Yes, okay. I, have, I have given a YouTube link also that you don't go. So go to your email and click your panelist invitation and it will say click here to join. Then you can join very well. There are 11 participants, they have raised their hands. What for? Madam, they want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. would, I, would I allow? I, let me see. No, no, it's getting late. I have not. Yeah. I have not it is uh, only telling good morning, hello. Uh, Dr. Uh, Bhagavan is there in that. Let me tell those who are raised. Yes, yeah. at least whom you know. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Bhagavan is there. Nagalakshmi Ramiriti Lang, Nagalakshmi has joined. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then Gopal Kumar and mm -hmm. uh, Tirunyanavel, our uh, former yes. scientist right. Tirunyanavel has also raised mm -hmm. the hand. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they are giving attendance, probably. Yes. <laughs> 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 they are giving yeah. attendance uh, by raising hand, actually. Yeah, yeah. So, Good. Sundaram, there are yeah many, many important uh, people you have joined. Alok Kumar Singh, mm -hmm. Chandra Mogan, mm -hmm. uh, Arun Kumar. Uh, many, many have uh, Vishal Ramesh, uh, Ramesh for Agarwal. Mm. Babita, uh, many, many have joined me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think someone's computer that sound is coming. Oh, someone's computer sound is coming. Only have rice. Dr. Bakiran, it's it. Dr. Bakiran, okay. Uh, there is a problem in their mic. So I think, uh, yeah, instead of video, I think you can, uh, if you have uh, your voice, you can uh, mic, no, you can put off, put off mic from the computer and uh, you can just uh, have the headset so that the sound can be avoided. Sir, could you be able to hear me? Yes, sir, very much, very much. Sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Very just, just yeah. chill. I'm not very sure about the gadgets. No, 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 very, very, very perfectly hearing. Yes, yes. See, I, you could see the full screen of you. Yeah, I, I, actually, it's visible. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, Perfect. Okay. So, that full screen also, I can uh, handle here, that's what. No problem. Madam, madam, could you see the full screen? Yes. Okay, that's what. So I think uh, it's around uh, 500 touching, madam, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Let us formally, uh, uh, we can start. So I yeah. just uh, say a brief. Uh, mm -hmm. Good afternoon to all of you uh, for joining our uh, uh, webinar series on banana. And this is our uh, fourth uh, webinar on precision farming in banana. And uh, we have a, a wonderful uh, experience with the panelist with us, Dr. Balabhan sir, uh, Dr. K.B. Patel, Dr. Kumar, Dr. Uh, Ravi. Uh, probably they are not seeing in this uh, video now, but our scientists will be joining uh, immediately. So this uh, uh, webinar, uh, almost 1,500 people have registered. And uh, those who could not join in Zoom, I think they can uh, live stream me uh, in NRC Banana, ICR NRC Banana uh, YouTube channel, which I have shared with you over email. You can uh, watch, uh, you can live streaming, you can watch there. And you can also uh, post your uh, questions or any queries to the speakers uh, 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 in chat box. So we'll be answering at the end of the uh, presentations. Uh, uh, so this precision farming is uh, uh, are very, very important to increase the productivity of banana and also production productivity of banana can be increased. Moreover, you can reduce the input cost and you can optimize everything for uh, uh, nowadays IoT has come. So one can do IoT based operations in the precision farming and all our experts are going to share uh, yes. uh, 
they be solved on all these things mm. uh, so uh, you know i would like to welcome our director and all the panelists dr abraham virgi so all the scientists i am welcoming and i request our director or to give you a uh, inaugural address for this webinar four madam please yes uh, go, good afternoon, good afternoon. Uh, dear uh, uh, panel members dr balmohan dr uh, uh, mr kb patil uh, dr ravi kumar abraham argi sir and many more people i have seen uh, known people in the field and also good number of participants i have seen i am seeing the farmers some people are uh, going to be uh, interested in entrepreneurship those who want to start banana farming uh, many names uh, who are familiar but they are not from uh, from the mainstream of agriculture i am seeing all of them uh, welcome to all of you for this webinar series uh, this is an interesting uh, topic uh, precision farming very fancy term in uh, agriculture uh, much uh, uh, talked about but uh, Uh, it's like touching an elephant blind man touching an elephant what precision farming is each one talks in their terminology and everything put together uh, is precision farming what everything has to come on the common plate is that's what uh, today you're going to hear from the panelists uh, uh, just to uh, being a diverse uh, uh, viewers in the webinar i just wanted to say what is precision farming selvarajan already said it is uh, uh, it based farm management where you identify you analyze and you manage the whatever the variability you have in your field in your farm for towards maximum profitability not only profitability and also sustainability of the uh, uh, resources and the environment as such so the whole thing put together is precision farming is a very uh, vital and dynamic terminology here more, uh, more of intuition and mind uh, the farmers who were working with their intuition and their uh, uh, mind now they are slowly turning towards uh, making decision based on the uh, data and uh, so that rational use of resources is being done though this concept was uh, uh, started in united states in early 80s after 40 years Uh, that that time they started with uh, grid sampling of the uh, of your farm land and they started putting the data together and they started analyzing so this was how it started but after 40 years it has taken us taken various dimensions it has taken to such a dimension uh, especially uh, in banana just for an example if you say in the international scenario uh, the way the plant protection measures they take for cigatoka leaf spot uh, where the drones are used the images are captured uh thermal imaging uh, software is used ca ca captured the moment there is a uh, initial symptom of uh, leaf spot coming and this is supported by the uh, environmental sensors data where temperature and relativity everything put together modeling is there based on all this data the moment there is a start of uh, infection they start spraying Uh, so this is the kind of uh, uh, it based it driven uh, management technologies people have used and apart from that what are the technologies we are talking about the field is uh, your field is normally uh, here it is monitored uh, by drones and satellites and uh, your prevailing temperature farm temperature moisture pressure everything the indicators field indicators is measured by your wireless and weather sensors and you use computers and smartphones and application uh, and other applications to help to analyze the information whatever you gather and uh, it will give some kind of suggestions which you will be implementing in the field so this list it gets updated with advancement of research and also what depending on the farm needs uh, if we are looking at it is this uh, precision farming is it complicated somebody may question but uh, it is the answer is both yes and no uh, yes because the technology is very new we are not used to so it is like uh, uh, something new which you are talking about uh, which you have some hesitation it because it needs some special skills skills uh, it's not complicated the answer no because there are simple technological solutions available to the all the farmers uh, for example some organizations and institutions government organizations and even many institutions are giving free platforms uh, and uh, devices for uh, 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 follow precision farming the next question people will ask is it expensive again the answer is yes and no 
uh, yes because it needs uh, special equipments uh, the software cost is high uh, so precision bombing technologies earlier they were used only by the big uh, larger farms but now the applications are becoming uh, free or near free so farmer needs uh, we have come to a situation where a farmer with just a smartphone and an internet access can do precision farming so the technology has become very easy and no cost so as the technology is becoming uh, um, on a higher end it is becoming cheaper and easier to use so naturally this is a very dynamic field which uh, which we are entering uh, i am sure uh, people have lot many curiosities and how these uh, technologies are implemented for precision uh, farming in banana is much awaited topic uh, we have excellent panelists i welcome all of them i wish all the best for this webinar uh, hope you enjoy this session thank you so much uh, over to dr selvarajan thank you madam thank you very much for your introductory uh, address uh, now uh, the state away our uh, dr balamohan sir is going to present uh, a talk on this precision farming uh, before which i would like to just uh, uh, tell about uh, dr balamohan uh, everyone uh, must be knowing about uh, professor Uh, T N Balamohan sir, uh, he has got a 35 years of uh, experience, uh, 36 years of experience, uh, 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 research experience, teaching experience, and uh, he is the recipient of Jawaharlal Nehru Award for his PhD uh, work. And he 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 received a FAO Fellowship for United Nations, and he awarded some chili ge chili genotypes for salt affected soils for his PhD in 1990 1996. for which he received the jawaharlal nehru award and you know he has generated more than 10 crores of uh, fund for handling 22 externally funded projects and he is uh, really he has in, uh, is involved in many banana hybrid developments more than five hybrids develop, uh, he has developed but it's all uh, fusarium resistant and many other traits it uh, consists and it's all uh, it, it would be released probably in coming years and he has uh, organized it. 43 capacity building trainings uh, for extension officials and also organized 79 training programs to the farmers and other people and you know he has published 237 research articles and also guided 11 phd students and 13 msc uh, students and in fact uh, in fact uh, very importantly he undergone training on michigan state university on value chain and supply chain management on fruits and vegetables and uh, he 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 was involved in many many uh, uh, important activity very importantly he was the founder dean of uh, hartiyath college and research institute uh, for women in tiruchirappalli he was the founder director and he established that uh, uh, college very wonderfully and you can uh, we used to go there and it's a wonderful uh, college for women and the students are performing uh, very nicely and uh, they are coming up in a big level there and uh, uh, dr balamohan is uh, then postdoctoral fellowship uh, uh, fellow in malaysia and in fact that is on again uh, banana so he used to tell about banana pisang all many pisang varieties pisang means malaysia so he talks and shares a lot about uh, uh, pisang banana dal very very importantly uh, he was involved in precision farming in banana which was implemented in kishnagiri and dharmapuri districts a uh, uh, decade back and that was a wonderful success and you know everyone uh, knows in the tamil nadu as well as all over india about his contribution on the precision farming moreover he has developed the ultra high density planting for mango guava moringa and for domestic as well as export market purpose how to grow uh, these crops and he has got a vast experience and in fact his biodata his uh, i can keep on talking about him uh, a lot uh, but otherwise all the people will be waiting for his talk So now I will uh, uh, share that uh, sir, uh, Sally immediately share, and would you like to tell uh, before? So I will just sir, share your just, presentation. Let's start. Yeah, yeah. I will. Okay. I will yeah. share your presentation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's here. Uh, could you see sir now? Yeah. Yeah. Please, you can go ahead. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sally Rajan, for uh, your. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, talk about in the sense, you no, know, you 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 told a lot about me then. Uh, thank you very much for the same and uh, welcome uh, all the uh, participants to this uh, webinar uh, the title is uh, precision farming in banana 
right um, uh, the topics what i am going to cover here status of indian bananas precision agriculture indian way of precision farming and coming to indian way of precision farming land preparation soil mapping mulching and soil cover tissue culture planting materials planting system season of planting micro irrigation and fertigation integrated pest management and disease management special operations and finally harvesting and handling so uh, let us let us go to the next slide now uh, say uh, precision farming as rightly pointed out by the director in nocb uh, it is little uh, complicated one before let me say something about the status of indian bananas Uh, banana is the fourth important uh, global food uh, fourth important global food which which is enriched with the minerals and vitamins uh, india has uh, an area of about 83 lakh hectares uh, and the production is close to 300 lakh tons and we share about 29.119% no production in the world which is i mean i mean india is the uh, i mean um, it ranks first in the production Uh, otherwise no uh, what we can say out of three bananas one is from india out of three bananas one is from india this is what our contribution and uh, coming to indian uh, way of cultivation uh, we have uh, four ecosystems no we are cultivating bananas in rather than under garden garden land situation wetland situation garden land of course using the underground water and wetland actually using river water and canal waters and padugai is very unique nowhere it is cultivated Uh, Padugai is nothing but cultivating bananas in one single area for years together. There are uh, gardens of hundred years old. Uh, they plant and just leave it. Uh, crop will be there forever, and they keep on harvesting. Wherein uh, they use it for leaf harvest as well as for uh, fruits. Then rainfed cultivation. Rainfed cultivation is a unique way of doing banana cultivation. This is being practiced in hills. most of the hills you no know, we grow hill bananas and uh, more than 95 to 100 percent close 90 100 percent of the bananas are cultivated only under rain fed situation and one more thing which is very unique to india is polyclonal system of cultivation a uh, polyclonal in the sense you no know, most of the countries only one variety or maximum two varieties may be cultivated on a commercial scale but in india you can see more than 18 varieties under commercial scale and uh, say uh, kerala is known for polyclonal cultivation when 20 varieties nearing 20 varieties are cultivated on a commercial scale in tamil nadu more than 10 varieties andhra and uh, karnataka there may be four or five varieties but anyway india is known for its polyclonal polyclonal cultivation uh, otherwise cultivating as many varieties as possible on a commercial scale next so coming to precision agriculture as uh, rightly pointed out uh, this is little complicated Uh, farm management using information technology so here uh, ensuring the crop and soil to receive exactly what they need but in nowadays we are not doing it in the sense uh, we, we are we are not sure about uh, the inputs what we are what we are giving to the crop in the sense uh, to the plant uh, uh, it is so uh, it is we are trying to do it very closely but we are not doing exactly what they need i mean Uh, uh, meant to us a crop requirement as well as uh, based on the soil uh, requirement so uh, uh, these two things are very essential uh, in the case of precision agriculture and coming to the goals uh, we need to ensure profitability uh, sustainability protection of environment this is very um, uh, i mean very often we are discussing about protection of environment because once we exploit uh, in years to come no the next generation They 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 look from us in the sense, you know, we need to protect unless otherwise, you know, continuing uh, the same I mean activity cannot be possible. So protection of environment is very important while while exploiting the land while exploiting the science. So here it is very important, and uh, this precision agriculture is also called as satellite agriculture because uh, this is again site specific crop management. So satellite is very important. The few gadgets are very important. Uh, next slide, please. uh coming to uh, precision agriculture we need specialized equipments uh, they are all they, these gadgets are little costly and we need uh, software to uh, uh, I mean, uh, make use of this uh, uh, in mean, science then it services we need and moreover we are very much in need of real time data about crops and soil 
So uh, when you grow a crop and you need to know about the crop stand age, uh, the stage, critical stages or not. So all this information we need continuously so that we can manipulate and uh, we can uh, I mean, do the justice, know what, what, what these crops are requiring. Then coming to soil, we, we need to study, we need to have all the data so that we can help uh, I mean, uh, getting the best out of the soil. So weather data we need uh, so that we'll be able to manipulate things. And all these things you know, will be useful to predict the analytics of the location. So for, for all these things, I mean, I mean, I mean to arrive at addition, we need all these informations um, either through, I mean, uh, specialized equipments, things of that kind. Next slide, please. So here, uh, sensor and satellites are used uh, to provide the real-time images of individual plants, gadgets to measure uh, all the particulars like the soil, nutrient, moisture, temperature, and surrounding air. Every every other particulars we are we are we, we need to know about it. So gadgets are used. Then all the all the information, you know the images as well as the data. They are put together and we come about with agronomical recommendations. So using these two things, we'll come about with agron agronomical recommendations. Once this is arrived, all these informations will be, I mean, will be implemented. All, all the data, what we have collected will be implemented through GPS and uh, of course, uh, mounted tractor or drones. So this is how it is done. Uh, as as uh, Director Inasi rightly pointed out, whether it is costly or not. Uh, uh, very sincerely saying it is very costly. Very costly in the sense, um, uh, it's possible only in, in those areas where you have enough area under cultivation. Otherwise, I can say what uh, it is possible under, under um, uh, estate farming. Estate farming. Estate farming is nothing but having more than 500 acres or 1,000 acres. 5,000 acres. So there it is possible because these expenses can be easily, we can spread the expenses. So if you have 5,000 acres, probably each acre will have so much of money. So that money can be affordable uh, by the farmer or whomsoever is involved in this process. So uh, it's difficult uh, to, I mean, get into this very, uh, I, mean, I mean, very much in Indian situation, but is it possible uh, in, in our situation, let us see how it's possible. So, um, uh, a, a precision warming is, is, is cost effective and it's not possible for us to practice because in Indian situation, we have fragmented land of two acres, five acres, 10 acres. So here it is very difficult to use and you cannot see contiguous planting of bananas in larger area and this technology to start with seems to be a little difficult. Okay, next slide. So how this is possible in Indian situation, let us see. Next slide, please. So there are, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, events, actually I have uh, given in a uh, um, chronological way. The first is actually preparation of land. The second, mapping the land based on the nutrient status. Uh, in the sense, actually there are about 16 nutrients. Suppose to start with, you no, know, I mean, a major and um, uh, secondary nutrients can be mapped up so that you'll be knowing where nitrogen is more or it is moderate or less so that you can do or justify uh, or application of a nutrient can be, I mean, I mean uh, uh, carried out based on the availability of nutrient in different, different places. And third is actually, uh, the first technology is actually mulching, of course, covering the land because nowadays weeding is very uh, costliest uh, operation uh, in any agriculture then conserving moisture is a very important thing. So mulching is a third important uh, factor to be considered and using a genuine planting material. Of course, quite a lot of companies are doing a nice job of producing and supplying tissue culture plants, which are totally free from pests and diseases by the time it is being supplied. So availability of genuine material, because as I said, no huge area is coming under bananas and all the diseases are transmitted from one land to the another land when, when you use suckers. So when you collect suckers, they are all apparently free from pest and diseases, but you cannot assure it then. So tissue culture plants, they assure you that the plants are totally free from all the pests and diseases, even viruses, so that at the time of planting, you'll be getting every genuine planting material. And the next is actually season and the method of planting, that's very important, uh, so that you'll be able to get every genuine, uh, I mean, uh, correct yield, no, uh, 
uh, all these things. And fourth is actually uh, micro irrigation and fertigation. And this is this is very important. Uh, it, it, it will save a lot of, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, things like you no know, natural resources like water cannot be uh, wasted. Uh, by micro irrigation, we can save, say, about 40% of the moisture, I mean, water. So this is very, very important te technology. And moreover, another technology is fertigation, applying nutrient to the soil or to the rhizosphere where it is needed. This technology is, is very important technology, uh, can able to save both nutrient as well as actually will, will prevent uh, the spoilage of soil um, in, 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 in cases where when, whenever you apply large quantity. Then uh, plant protections, no? Uh, uh, I mean, integrated uh, disease management and integrated pest management. And finally, uh, this crop has got a unique, uh, unique, uh, these things in recommend like special operations are to be performed. There are actually a bunch of cover, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, fruit care, so many things are to, you know, I mean, are, are to be attended. So special operations, then finally harvesting. So let us uh, take uh, field operations. And uh, see, this is neither a perennial uh, uh, deep rooted or a shallow rooted. Uh, it is going to cover not less than three, three feet or one meter from the top. So yes, essentially it's very essential, I mean, uh, uh, to go, go for a sisal plowing, which will open up the soil uh, fairly uh, to a depth of about uh, two meter, two feet, uh, even up to three feet, so that uh, planting will be, I mean, I mean, the performance of the banana, banana will be very better. Very much better and the second is leveling the soil this is the first and the foremost uh, operation uh, to be followed next slide please and the next is actually as i pointed out field map for nutrient status uh, this is actually can this this can be done either manually or even with the uh, uh, gadgets you no know, um, and it uh, assistance so once you have the map the land you'll be able to understand where the excess uh, uh, nutrient is there for example what you are seeing here is the nitrogen status of the particular land where we are going to plant bananas. So here, uh, the dark uh, I mean, I mean, uh, blue color says it is very rich in nitrogen or high content is more and accordingly it is classified. And if it is possible for you to regulate and to provide nutrient accordingly, you can give nutrient accordingly so that you can save nutrient as well as you can give wherever it is needed. Next slide, please. This is another important technology uh, which is missing in most of the places, but going for mulches. If you provide mulch, you can, you can conserve moisture. Of course, uh, even micro irrigation is very important technology, but the conserving moisture seems to be very, very essential. So here uh, by mulch, you can save moisture, you can control weeds. So once the soil temperature is increased, the microbial activity will be multifold. So growth will be far better than, of course, in the open field. Uh, and the, in the mulch field, the growth will be far better because the microbes inside the soil, because of the enhanced temperature, the activity will be much, much better so that you'll be able to get better yield. And again, it is faster than the open field. Next slide, please. So uh, what you're seeing is uh, mulch, the uh, uh, plastic mulch. You can see uniform growth because of two reasons. One is uh, one is because of, I mean, uh, uh, tissue culture plants and the soil is fully covered, the moisture is conserved, the activity of the microbe is enhanced so that you'll be able to get a very good crop. Uh, when the yield will be far better than, when, when, uh, better than, than the open field conditions. Next slide, please. So uh, coming to the third uh, important uh, I mean, uh, I mean factor is tissue culture. Of course, uh, uh, it is coming up, but it, uh, not to that level, to that level in the sense, Say uh, maybe 30% uh, of the farmers are using, uh, I mean, even uh, I mean, more, many more to come, come and uh, uh, make use of this technology uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, to get uh, decent yield. And here, uh, uh, this is, is, is very essential uh, for a few reasons. As I said, these are totally free from percentages by the time you plant it. And another thing, by the time you plant, it has a very good root system and the performance of this tissue culture is beyond doubt. You know, they give better results, and they they they, they are actually they are uniform in uh, I mean conditions. So if you want to export bananas in large quantity using this, probably you'll be able to harvest in one single stock. Um, in collecting the quantity you like, and the export is very simple with these plants. And that, another thing is, it is little earlier than suckers, little earlier than suckers, maybe a week or ten days or fifteen days. Next slide, please. The next is seasonal planting. Of course, uh, um, all the farmers, they are focused to make 
profit out of it. And uh, if you are not having market intelligence, probably the use of, of course, cultivating banana is ultimately defeated. And there are a few things you need to uh, consider. The one is actually availability of resources. For example, um, uh, th those people who are cultivating bananas um, along the river wells, you know, under wetlands, wetland cultivation, uh, they wait for canal irrigation. So availability of resources will decide the planting time. And next is weather factor. Sometimes, you know, uh, if hurricane comes or any problem, you no, know, during the bunching time or during the food development, definitely crop will be um, in affected. So you have to calculate uh, the natural uh, issues like uh, uh, wind, hurricane, all these things. Uh, accordingly, they will plant uh, to avoid uh, the damage because of those things. And the next, last is actually very important one, market. You have to come from the market. At when, when I suppose if you're, if you're, I mean, harvesting is coinciding with the uh, festival day, definitely you'll be getting a better price. So it should be market-led rather than production-led. So seasonal planting should be market-led so that you'll be able to get a better price at the end of the day. And then actually uh, coming to planting um, in time, no, uh, wetland system, uh, the best planting February, April. And in the case of garden land, the January, February and November, December. Padagai, of course, they cultivate uh, around there, but anyway, January, February, and August, September, these two seasons are very ideal for Padagai situation. And in the case of uh, fish banana, April, May, uh, that's at the time now you'll be able to get uh, some uh, showers, no, uh, summer showers, and uh, next season also, and during the August also, they used to go for planting. So this, this, these things are very important. Coming to planting, normal planting uh, uh, courses, garden land for varieties, medium varieties, spacing is there and for dwarf varieties spacing is that uh, all these, these informations are available and any, any, anyone can avail this information in most of the portals, agriculture I mean, university portal or things of that thing. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Right. If now we can see uh, the spacing you know, for normal uh, planting and for high density planting. High density is advised uh, when, when, when you go for any uh, export market, you need to uh, produce uniform bunches. So there high density planting is recommended. So against uh, 3,086 and uh, high density planting, it, you can go up to even 6,944. So uh, it varies with variety and uh, of course purpose for which you are going to grow the crop next slide please so here the density again of course here uh, planting one uh, uh, sucker or plant in in a pit or three plants per pit so this is also uh, being practiced in some parts of the country um, according to their own requirement putting one plant per pit uh, or otherwise sometimes putting putting three plants per pit um, and according to their own requirement to get uniform bunches and yield at the end of the day. So here, if you if you go for one single plant, the yield is around 86 tonnes. And if it is three plants per plant, of course, uh, per pit, it, it used to be the 110 kg, uh, 110 uh, tonnes per hectare. So uh, yield can be enhanced and you'll be able to get uniform bunches. And uh, this method will provide more hands for export purpose. Uh, so this is uh, this is again recommended in places where uh, people are going for, I um, mean, uh, of course, export purpose, uh, export export uh, based. On. And coming to the next important thing is water requirement for banana. So here, uh, banana, as we all aware, uh, 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 perennial herb, uh, requiring water in different times in rather different quantity. So it starts with October to September, using all these uh, parameters like uh, a ban operation. ETP, uh, crop factors, canopy factors, a daily water can be easily decided and uh, we can pump out or you can feed um, in the quantum of water required for individual plant. And it varies based on so many factors, say from two liters to 12 liters per day, of course, according to the season and uh, stage. Next slide, please. So here again, nutrient. Of course, nutrient is a very important one. There are about 60 nutrients, primary nutrients, secondary nutrients, and um, uh, micronutrients. All these things, you know, we, we are very much aware that how much, how much nutrient is removed by a plant from one hectare. Accordingly, we can decide how much nutrient is to be given. 
but at, at this point of time, actually, I wanted to tell all these people, um, agriculture, we are doing agriculture without testing soil. Uh, any recommendation should be soil-based or plant-based, but we are not doing it. Uh, I mean, soil-based application is not being practiced and it say we are not, of course, going with the uh, plant-based. And if you are switching over to soil-based nutrient, of course, based on the availability, if you decide the nutrient, then you can save a lot of uh, money uh, by cutting short of uh, the quantum then. And if it is leaf-based, further no, you'll be very sure about it. So in the case of precision farming, I mean, precision agriculture, most of the things are leaf-based. Then that's the reason why it's possible for them to cut, cut down the cost of cultivation. So we all aware so much of nutrient is, uh, I mean, removed by the plant one hectare. So accordingly, we can manipulate. So here, uh, one thing I wanted to uh, tell, there are cost-effective gadgets available. So what you are seeing there, actually one of the gadgets is about less than 2,000 rupees, which can able to measure soil moisture, temperature, relative humidity, some extent salt. So um, field gadgets are available at an affordable price. I mean, it's, it's very essential uh, to use these gadgets because as i said no uh, affordable in the sense less than there are uh, gadgets available it's 600 rupees uh, 800 rupees and some of the gadgets are it's, uh, maximum cost is about uh, uh, 2000 rupees these gadgets can be very well used uh, to precisely decide the irrigation schedule of course the interval and we can also predict few diseases and pests coming to uh, nutrient management in critical levels we have a uh, 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 database and accordingly we can decide how much of nutrient, how much nutrient uh, for one ton of banana, uh, say how much we have to apply for 50 tons of uh, banana. So all these uh, actually informations are available very much so that we can make use of those technologies of data for I mean, deciding how much nutrient to be given for one acre or one hectare of land. Next slide, please. So coming to the nutrient deficiency. So here, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the second important thing, uh, apart from water, is fatigation. Fatigation uh, will be able to save a huge amount of nutrient. And uh, by fatigation, we'll be able to reach the rhizosphere where the nutrients are needed. So uh, we, we have the data like uh, uh, how much nitrogen is needed in the first 10 weeks, uh, how much it is needed in the, se um, in the second 12 weeks, and uh, again, uh, how much we need in the third 12 weeks and last three weeks. So all the nutrients, of course, we now, we have data, database so that um, how much nutrients, I mean, we need to apply in, in different different stages so that we can, uh, I mean, apply accordingly uh, to get the best result of it. Next slide, please. So here, uh, this is a tissue culture banana with the water soluble fertilizers. And uh, this is available, I mean, I mean, it's not a big problem. Uh, I have given a gram per week and total nitrogen, similarly for phosphorus, similarly for potash, how much needed at what stage. And if you apply probably, you can able to uh, match with the requirement of the banana uh, growth. Next slide, please. So here, uh, the, uh, coming to the special operations, as I said, a few special operations are there. The one and one, one, the first important special operation is desaccharing. Once you have uh, a disciplined planting, the sense so tissue culture, uh, uh, I mean, uh, like, uh, I mean, uh, mulchings, you no know, plastic mulches, and clean cultivation, you will be able to get uh, very good growth. And you, need, you should restrict uh, the side circus till flowering. After flowering, if you are, if you are interested in, uh, I mean, return crop, probably you can allow one uh, sucker to grow uh, so that you can go for return cropping. This is very important desuckering. We can use either gadgets, some chemicals are also there to control the. Uh, I mean, suckering of bananas. So either way, you can go ahead. Next slide, please. So this is again a, a, a picture so a, a well-maintained banana plantation. Next slide, please. Now, the next is actually a propping with rope. Of course, uh, uh, you can also do it with the uh, I mean, sticks, of course, bamboo sticks or, or gasolina poles, uh, either way you can use. And this is a cost effective, easy to erect, easy to store, and the cost is about 15 rupees per plant. So this way you can also do cropping with either with the rope or with the I mean, um, uh, poles, uh, wooden poles. Next slide, please. The next important is actually uh, pest and disease management. A few pests are there and few diseases are there. Uh, say nowadays, now we are using only 
manually we are doing uh, either with uh, power sprayers or hand sprayers. And uh, now farmers are actually, uh, if, if they join together with the drones also, these um, I mean, I mean, technology can be very well uh, integrated and we can, you can do it very precisely. So for, for which you need large area and uh, uh, farmers coming together so that they can able to own these drones by themselves or they can hire. So uh, patient disease management is a very important or critical one. Uh, by clean cultivation, you can reduce as much as possible and using these technologies probably you'll be able to do it and control the patient diseases if you like. Next slide please. Next is bunch cap. Of course, this is a very important one wherein uh, most, of the, most of the exporters are insisting upon uh, because they need uh, fruits or fingers free from any pest and disease attack. A clean fruits, no possible only when you go for a bunch cap uh, using chemicals, uh, both uh, pest, I mean, pesticide and fungicide. Uh, I mean, uh, this, this is being practiced in area where uh, bananas are cultivated I mean, exclusively for export purpose. Next slide, please. So uh, uh, this is another important uh, uh, technology to be followed by uh, banana growers, a uh, bunch covers. Uh, say polythene bags, or sometimes you no know, organically, I mean, I mean bio biodegradable materials are also there. Uh, two to four percent ventilation, and if you use these uh, covers, probably you'll be able to. Um, I mean, uh, harvest the crops uh, two weeks ahead, and uh, this will help you to produce spotless or bright bunches, uh, which will be very essential for export uh, of uh, bananas from uh, here to um, any part of the country or any, any any other country. So next is actually besides bunch cover is one more technology which, which is essential is a tagging. Would able to see the colors, you no, know, the ribbons actually hanging below the. So this will clearly tell you whether the bunches are ready for harvest or not. So yellow tag, maybe 95 days, this is okay for harvesting. Uh, I mean, I mean, for, I mean uh, okay for bananas, which are ready for long distance market, maybe the green uh, short distance market. So th that will give you the I mean, maturity stat status so that you'll be able to harvest the way you like. And uh, say the harvesting starts, say from 75th day in, in few varieties, it may be 80th or 90th day. So accordingly, you can manipulate, of course you can do harvesting at the end of the day, probably you will be able to uh, meet the requirement. I mean, the market requirement. Next. And finally, this is a very important thing, which is not used by most of the people. I mean, measuring the fruit, the diameter. So uh, it, the second uh, hand is the, uh, I mean, uh, one which is used for uh, taking the one, of course, to um, measure the uh, maturity based on the thickness of the uh, fruit. So uh, now um, we are engaging so many people they may be, of course, I mean, uh, known to the crop or they may be new. So using the gases, probably we can easily uh, I mean, ask those people to harvest the uh, bunches uh, I mean, uh, to meet the market requirement. Next. So this is how it's, it looks once it is harvested, uh, when, once, once we give all the uh, food care uh, technologies. Next. So this is actually a new one, of course, wherein we are actually transporting bunches uh, from the garden to a processing center next uh, to avoid all the oh, I mean, damages. And once this is coming, and here they uh, de-hand it either with the nylon rope or I mean, uh, car rope or something like that. Next. Next, because this is de-handed, cleaning. Yes, next. So this is what most of the places are bananas are being loaded. Uh, when, uh, that, that will spoil 20 to 30 percent of the bananas. Uh, but uh, now actually crates are used uh, for transport of bananas from uh, land I mean, field to uh, processing centers. And in the processing centers, they are being handled very nicely. So uh, to avoid all these things, we, we need to uh, use uh, crates for transport of bananas from field to uh, processing centers. Next. So here, uh, uh, once uh, you pack it very nicely, it looks like this. And the optimum storage temperature is, uh, I mean, about 13.3 to 14.4 centigrade. And the optimum relative humidity vapor for storage is about 90 plus. And uh, uh, ripening also, we, we can do it uh, as and when uh, you, you need. So uh, say from planting to harvesting, and if you do nicely, a banana which is fetching four rupees or five rupees here, will fetch 
one or one and a half dollars over there, of course, 100 rupees over there in foreign countries. So if you bring all this technology together, probably farmer can able to make a decent income and he can able to stay or uh, get a sustainable, uh, I mean, agriculture actually go, go for sustainable one. Next. Uh, this is what I wanted to share with you people and um, any any uh, queries and all, uh, will, will, I mean, I'm ready to answer. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for patient listening. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your wonderful lecture. Uh, of course, there are a lot of questions uh, 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 in this question and other 32 questions have been asked. And we will be keeping this question and answer at the end of the uh, yes. presentations. Uh, yes. Thank you very much for... Uh, so you have to stay till at the end so that you can answer uh, those questions if possible yes. by the yes. Yes. Uh, yes. participants. Yes. So, uh, coming to the next presentation is Dr. Uh, Ahi Ravi. Uh, he's a principal scientist working at NRC Barana and he has got 17 years of experience in Barana. Uh, uh, and again, he worked for 10 years uh, in uh, Rice uh, Katak, Rice Research Institute in Katak. And in his, he did his PhD at IRA, Indian Agriculture Research Institute on wheat crop. And uh, he has done work on the source sink relationship. And uh, as a physiologist, he has done a wonderful work on uh, drought resistant, salt resistant uh, in banana. And he has uh, published a wonderful article in Frontiers of Plant Science on uh, phenotyping of uh, uh, this uh, uh, abiotic stress uh, tolerance in banana, which he has been cited by more than 300 uh, uh, times. So Dr. Ravi, uh, uh, he would be uh, sharing uh, his expertise on IoT, uh, application of IoT uh, in precision farming. And uh, uh, I request Dr. Ravi uh, to share his slides uh, by himself. You can share, Dr. Ravi? Yes. Yeah, please share your uh, uh, slides and you can go ahead with your presentation, please. Yeah. So the slides are visible now? Yeah, visible. You can make full um, this slides. So yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. it's okay, I think. Yes, yes. So, good evening to all. So, uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, attending this uh, webinar. So, the Dr. D.N. Balamohan, it's very nicely has uh, given your overall picture about our uh, the banana technologies involved, especially in the pre-season farming. And also our director also has elaborately totally told about what is what precision for me. So I just, it is an extension of what Dr. Balamohan told and given about that uh, uh, precision for me. Just to, just to a few minutes, already a director has told that how it has got evolved from eight years. And uh, Dr. Balamohan also there, it, he said very clearly that the goal is to get uniform yield in your field through site specific management. And do you know, the, the very much uh, the fact we should know is the precision farming is a, not a technology. It is a management technique that we should be able to know, know that it is a management technique. So the management techniques, we all know that the, how we, we have to get the, all the details of your field, each and every minute details the more and more of details we are uh, uh, gathering from a field, then we are more and more of a precise and accurate. Then we can get the yield. So through the IoT, here the sensor and everything, what uh, earlier lectures uh, Dr. Balamohan told, everything we placed. Here, the collection of data is very much uh, through a kind of IoT, uh, through IoT. So here it is mainly involved is Internet of Things. So here the human human and human computer computer system is so that interface is got eliminated. So that is the most important thing I want to here emphasize. Earlier the precision farming is uh, uh, it's for a very big area. Now because of the more and more growth of uh, our uh, the computer all technologies. Now we can come together for even small areas. So based on this, all those things, nowadays there is no blanket recommendation for anything 
any agrochemicals nutrition or hormones anything we have to go for the need based or a requirement based so whatever when we are going for precision agriculture we have to go how to have a, a good farm management system should be there then only we can shift to the this kind of a technology so this is all i think already we told so the how what is in a high ot in a, a pa that uh, precision agriculture is we all know that that uh, fourth industrial revolution also known as industry force four they will call it as this is emerged a lot of the technology including your uh, iot artificial intelligence machine learning robotics automation virtual and the commercial reality these are the things which is uh, now it has come to fourth industrial revolution so automatically whatever the revolution happening in any other field it will automatically get into that any other even whether it is healthcare or agriculture or management definitely it will take into that effect so similarly the industry four also get led into the concept of we are changing to the concept of agriculture four where in which these all concepts are getting to the uh, the better management of uh, to the may various issues including like soil management fertilizers pests and crop management yield and plants and whatever the issues what we are developing uh, what we are facing or we are handling in the crop management so this is a thing which we got impetus in the right now in the internet of things also only say so the basic iot requirement is this is it is not a very big thing the thing is that of course hardware we uh, very much required whatever the system and the sensors and everything any camera all those things even including uh, unmanned aerial vehicle that is called the drones everything is very much required and of course software this is all interface interface about the, the things which are capturing the all the data and the transmitting all those things the over and above all we have to have here the basic brain is the best management practices this is very much important the key ingredient for that i would anything precision agriculture or anything is we need to have a information then only this can be translated into this all those things your software business for better management so all anything management is ease of management as well as precise and quick management with all those best management so as i told here this iot the internet of things is remove this kind of human human right, human computer system interactions so this is what uh, what is happening in uh, uh, this suppose in a farm anything we have this one so whatever we have the uh, that sensors placed in different areas the where we are getting all the datas then we are gather in the different node then it will go to the gateway node then it will go to the our internet there we will go for a whatever we have database the database all the things where we have the total loaded with the database based on that the analytics and the logic uh, logical everything the decision will be taken then that will go through that uh, your again the mobile user or that our user it will go there there we will take automatically the decision we can monitor what is what it is going on so th- for example this is a small uh, Uh, yeah, small example for soil health monitoring recommending system. How they are making it? So here you are making the soil health management, which is make a soil moisture sensor, pH sensor, and the temperature meter. So these are all will be this coming to the microcontroller. Then it will it is going to the, the transmitter. Then it will go to the all your uh, this your database and the what is your recommended based on this your this one what is your recommendation for our record then. then it will go to the farmers these are the things it is purely the information which has to be given for that so same thing i have given here also same the whatever that the diagram we have given here same thing how it is given the sensor and the actuator is going on and the how the data is get a, it is getting acquired and it's transmitted for the all those on analysis then of data centers it's going for the cloud then it is transmitted for this so this is the one thing how it is small a yeah, yeah, kind of yeah, based on this how we this uh, yes yeah, irrigation management a yeah, small thing just we we'll just to see the video clip of that seconds you are observing the overview of the project and how the plants are planted here here are the tomato plants which looks healthy 
the valve is automated based on the soil moisture reading taken from the controller. If the moisture is less, the valve will be on and vice versa. Where in the case of emergency, you can turn it on or off irrespective of sensor value using this mobile application which we have created. And here... So these are all things, whatever we have seen that one. So based on the, the sensor, the, the value it is sending to the, our, the that mobile app, so it's automatically, we set the values. When the soil matches come down, it should on. When it is a particular value is reached, it should off. So it's automatically, it is getting made it through internet. These are all things you can make through the app. Uh, through app, we can operate. How much in your, the nutrients or water? See the nutrients, uh, there, is, there is no much, uh, many sensors are available. The, nowadays for uh, nutrients uh, deficient and everything, we have to have a, a kind of a draw that uh, the image capturing, the image capturing of the leaf based on the color chart, coloring of the leaf. So there we can have that, that leaf structure. There based on that, we have to have a database to which nutrient deficiency is, uh, is absent. Based on that, these nutrients will be, optimum amount of nutrients will be released. So this is the things what we are getting the, all the data from the sensor. So based on this data, we can have which is optimum and everything in the database. So we can uh, make it the set, uh, what the set the data, how much it should go for this particular crop. And based on this, all those things, then only we can have a very good uh, the management of the all the farming and your banana growth. The growth will be very, 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 very excellent. And moreover, very precise farming will be there. There may not be any well, loss of water or fertilizer. Rather, loss means it's a wastage of fertilizer and waters and everything. So by the doing this all better and water management based on precise requirement of the plant, we can reach the very high yield. So this is another small video clip, how the data is collected through these uh, uh, drones. See, here, uh, there is a scanning of the whole field by the drone. So there, is always, there are a lot of sensors are placed in a field. So it can collect all the data, it transmit to the, the cloud computer. So there, what are the uh, ways, uh, data is available, they will be transmitted there. So there the data will be processed and uh, even for different uh, places, different uh, depth of the places, for trees and different plants, based on the different crop area. So accordingly we can place the sensor. So all the data will be captured. some of the things data we get it through that one so uh, based on that we can uh, go for the management so this is the things and uh, based on their data we collected how these are also in banana plantation how the people go for the and uh, the aerial spray through drones for that one of course definitely we will go with the whatever the precision farming the technology whatever we uh, dr balamoni elaborated a to z of the technology Everything will be converted into that uh, in, in, in the form of sensor based data. It will be uh, transmitted through internet. There it will be processed based on our database. It will be fixed for make all making management. Then next is this uh, IoT is also in uh, placed in supply chain management also. It is also, it is plays very crucial role. Suppose the moment uh, when we harvested very good bananas are, we have made everything, we are placed and sending it for storage. We can have a small a sensor sticker there, each and every place of the, our, uh, that our uh, packages. There it can give the sensor, what is the CO2, what is the ethylene level. It can give, keep on giving the, those data to our mobile. So what is my consignment or the life of that? 
so we can monitor what is the stage of this one so accordingly we can store as well as we can also take it out for the next process so this is another one one of the important application what we see that there are lot of food is wasted it may be due to uh, maybe excess production or maybe we have we may transported in a wrong uh, time or wrong place or wrong price so what they say is that if we put a small sticker in that each and that banana small hands in a hands the moment it reaches your place of consumer the moment they saved that the amount will be the data will be collected there so the how much banana is consumed in a particular place in particular time in particular area these things will be collected so based on that we can get the data of demand so these are the things in the iot is a plays very important role even supply chain management also so these are the things which are some of things i am telling you very briefly about the but the iot is role is very very white we can say the sky is the limit we can place each and every uh, uh, aspect of our agriculture production from seed to seed and the moreover thing is the cost nowadays of course nowadays because of the uh, more of many companies are coming now the cost is now it is coming for a day by day it is coming reduced if you know that in 80s and 90s that the digital watch is around from japan it is around 1000 rupees nowadays it is getting we are 50 rupees and the same thing similarly now the software and everything developing when we are getting more and more consumer for a particular kind of this aspect definitely will be to become cheaper and cheaper the so even the small farmers they can uh, adopt it even for many fpos fpcs they can get it for their own clusters so with this informations i just uh, thank uh, all the audience and as well as the panelists over the compiler thank you so much for giving this opportunity thank you uh, dr ravi can you uh, yeah stop sharing it yeah yeah so dr ravi thank you for your uh, wonderful uh, uh, lecture and it's very very interesting the video played within the powerpoint yeah. and bringing all the gadgets yeah. uh, being used in the uh, field uh, in fact the location specific technology is very important that's what we have shown that each and every field has to be monitored for uh, everything to go for a precise uh, way of uh, giving the inputs as less well managing the entire field for a better uh, productivity and also uh, better uh, input use efficiency and uh, it's a wonderful uh, way that you have uh, displayed that video of course uh, with a good background uh, music which i think all we enjoyed that your voice that time of video play Uh, uh thank you dr ravi now uh, thank you i now actually there are a lot of questions i request the panelist dr ravi as well as dr balamohan sir yeah. you can see question and answer uh, in the down so if you click question and answer you can uh, reply there itself you can just type it and you can if it is related to your questions you can just type and answer the uh, questions there itself otherwise uh, at the end we have to answer otherwise i think uh, most of the questions you can answer uh, there itself Uh, both okay. I request both the panelists to do um, yeah, during this presentation. So now, Dr. Uh, uh, K. B. Patil, you know, I think all of you, all banana people, might be knowing about Dr. K. B. Patil. He is presently working as a vice president of uh, Jain Irrigation Systems Limited, and you know, he is uh, basically a agricultural graduate. Uh, during masters, he specialized in horticulture, and uh, uh, he is uh, PhD also specialized in uh, horticulture. and you know he is the person a one person equal to 1000 extension officers more than 1000 i would say it's a very big uh, a, a leader in uh, extension activity and banana if you talk in maharashtra or uttar pradesh or anywhere uh, in india you go to thane you know kalyan singh babura patil everyone say yes so he is a well known Uh, extension worker and uh, he takes every technology if you have got any technology just pass on to him it will reach the farmers in no time so such a wonderful uh, 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 of a person who has dedicated his entire life for banana farmers so that's uh, very very interesting and uh, you know he has got such a wonderful experience he has visited more than 20 countries exclusively for banana not for any other purpose not for going for a tourist or anything 
he has gone exclusively wherever international conference is there he will be there and he will talk to all the experts and get the knowledge so such a, a vast experienced person he has gone to latin american country and he has gone to australia costa rica germany portugal china thailand everywhere taiwan philippines and uh, uh, turkey many many countries he has visited for the purpose of uh, banana uh, to know the, how uh, internationally uh, people are doing banana so uh, i don't know because uh, if i keep on telling about him it will take lot of time so uh, just i will cut short he is a, a well known banana uh, expert in the world i would say so straight away i request dr k b patil uh, to share your presentation you can go ahead please share your uh, thank you dr selvarajan and uh, thank you so much today's chief guest uh, dr uma ma'am director in rcb uh, dr bal mohan dr ravi dr shiva dr kumar uh, dr jay baskaran and today's uh, webinar moderator dr selvarajan thank you so much sir and uh, i welcome all the delegates for this wonderful uh, webinar organized by uh, nrcb and definitely as i uh, told uh, in the beginning itself this webinar has reached to the all corner of the country and around 20 25 countries in the world and we have seen many many thanks and many appreciation from the people in india and outside india so thank you so much ma'am and for your team so basically uh, we will talking about the precision farming of bananas and as you know well as dr silverajan says dr balmon says dr ravi says see uh, we have to see how the technology is applicable on the field and how the uh, end user the small farmer get benefit out of this uh, technology so we will see what kind of precision we can do at the farm level definitely there was a question and it was a point of discussion whether this iot whether this precision farming whether this high tech model of farming whether it is uh, economical whether it is expensive or whether it is affordable or whether it is viable and cost effective so all the questions you may see over here definitely we can uh, say that because of the precise management the banana grower and the banana farming become a profitable business in the country so we will see what kind of innovation what kind of precision we need in the tissue culture what kind of innovation what kind of preciseness or what how we can tackle the climate extremity issues with the help of precision farming you know well and we'll see further also in our country majority of the area majority of the state say for example gujarat up mp maharashtra madhya pradesh karnataka andhra everywhere there is a varied type of soils if you go to raveri in jalgaon madhya pradesh very high very heavy soil very hot climate very low no, chilling temperature in uttar pradesh here in jalgaon it reaches up to 48 so how can we tackle all those issues with the help of precision in farming precision in banana so as we talked about dr saab talked about the water management nutrient management our friend dr jay baskaran is sitting over there so we all know the importance of water management importance of nutrition management soil water plant relationship how can we address all these small small issues with the help of the the knowledge the research and the what the things have been done in last 25 year see we as a country we as a area like maharashtra where we are growing banana in a different climate which is not conducive at all so over a period of 25 years how we modify the technology because we are working since last 25 years with nrc and we are very grateful to the nrcb because the from the foundation stone of nrcb we are working together so see here what we people need you know the tissue culture industry is doing well in the country uh, and because of uh, 
the because of the technological intervention because of the merit because of the plant quality because of the genuine property of the planting material we saw many questions of the farmers so how the tissue culture industry also look at the technology this is what we called about the protected nursery as uh, dr uma madam knows well dr selvarajan was the in charge for the virus indexing and nrc did millions of sampling testing in nrc so this is the way how we are tackling with the sampling how to provide the disease free sampling virus free planting material but this is one way if each and every industry if each and every people if they think of having the protected mother nursery here we can control the vector and here we can control the transmission of the viruses to the mother nursery so with this small small thing small small innovation there is a preciseness so once we are collecting the suckers collecting the planting material from the good farmers field or open mother nursery but there is one technology for the mother nursery also for the commercial production of the bananas as if we go to the turkey you may find all bananas around 4500 hectares of banana is under greenhouse cultivation if we go to the israel around 2200 hectares of banana is in shed net houses so israel matter is different because they are getting water by paying because they have to paid for the water so they want to save 30% of the water but turkey's issue is different where the temperature goes below minus 8 degree centigrade so they wanted to rise up the temperature to pro, to avoid the chilling to the bananas hand to make the banana farming possible in adana mersing gazipasa in that particular area so you see this structure and see the three ages of the structures where we can think of the protected mother nursery and also for the water saving and also for the solution to the extremity in the climate to avoid the chilling injury many of our grower from up they have joined in this uh, webinar so they have their different issues we'll see those issues also in this production cycle we need to have little more precision what kind of precision we can do as you see this is 15 years back when you were visiting jalgao you see this is the technology where the product plant were produced in the poly bag and the each and every sapling was provided with the dripper for the nutrient and water management but what was the issue related with this technology what was the problem with this technology when you been to ganandpur kadappa and karnul the people will farmer will tell us ki sir we were facing so much of problem in the month of march april and may where the temperature was very high and that's why we shifted to another technology here you see the modern way the precise way of growing the sapling here you will see how the saplings are protected from the from the rainy season in the month of july you know this is the time for the uh, supply of sapling to the grower and also this is the rainy season in uh, particularly karnataka andhra maharashtra gujarat mp so how can we solve this problem how can we address the problem if the water is falling down and it is stagnated in the poly bag so we so we need to think of the poly houses for the secondary hardening so that you can say this is the control climate provided for the raising the nursery for hardening of the sapling another important issue you can see over here this is the machine which is uh, for the tray filling and automated plant is uh, planting of the sapling so how this machine address the issues related with the tissue culture sapling this issue this machine uh, address two three issues once we were filling instead of poly bag we, we are shifting to the portrays if you see the portray is fill up with the media if it is fill up with the help of machine so you can uniformly put up the media into the in the portray so media is pressed at certain pressure so each and every cup is having near about the equal quantum of the media the density of the media is also maintained and another thing when we do the manual planting one may one labor one person will plant on the border of the poly bag border of the portray somebody will pl plant at the center another will plant on east and where something like that so what are the human errors if we have 
thousand people working over there there are thousand mistake made by the people and that's why we need a precision we need a automation as dr ravi was taking talking about the iot we need such kind of automation so that we can put up a sapling at the center and it the uniform plantation can be done over a period of 5 8 hours of the working hours you can see over here this is what neat beds climate control for the hardening which i was talking about you look at to the roof of the roof of the slide you may find all the shed nets they have wind up so why when when we are planting banana in the month of march april and may where in andhra pradesh in the in uh, anandpur and kadappa the temperature is about 40 to 44 here in jalgaon about 46 there in barwan it is about 45 so uh, the plant should withstand the adverse climatic condition and we need to acclimatize the plant in such a way so that after planting in the farmers field it may not have any stress or any shock in the field so you look at to the up, to the uh, uh, upside of the poly house you may find this when you need a more light you need a uh, more light you need a less light and you need a tertiary hardening so when you open the net and expose sunlight on the sapling from the polythene it make the plant more harder and it can withstand even in a adverse condition so with this how we achieve we will see again how we achieve the planting in the off season because as you know well uh, the day to day today's the banana scenario country because of the dedicated effort from nrc all the scientists and the people like us so you see there is huge demand throughout the year in the market in the domestic market as well as in the international market so we need to have that kind of plantation system as we discussed earlier you look at to this slide because uh, as dr selvarajan says so dr uma ma'am knows well because we all are together everywhere in uh, majority of the countries so what are the issues of grower today so majority of the area if you go to jalgaon baranpur badwani or here in wapi surat you may find very heavy soil if you go to karnataka belgaum and bijapur in gulbarga area very heavy soil see even in tamil nadu very heavy soil in some areas so how can you tackle the banana require the soil should be very well drained very pulverized and the uh, water infiltration rate should be uh, very good so that the root zone development the rhizosphere will be aerated and that's why if it is a water stagnated land if it is very heavy soil and if there is a heavy rainfall and that's why if you we need to create a drainage we develop this kind of model planting banana 15 years 12 years back nobody was believing that we can plant banana on the raised bed but nowadays to address the heavy black cotton soil issues the entire international scientific forum says ki banana need very well drained soil but if grower is not having that kind of soil what need to do and this is the solution for the grower if he don't have that kind of soil he can prepare raised bed he can put up drip irrigation then planting on raised bed you will surprise to know if you come to jalgaon today go to baranpur and badwani you may find entire banana is planted on raised bed system which create good aerated can aeration in the root zone and the initial and afterward growth of the plant is very excellent so these are very very small issues this is another important technology you what we can say we need to think up more precisely that is one issue we solve the drainage problem by making the raised bed but this is the another technology there is one farmer mr shekhar choudhry from tamil nadu from tandalwadi if you go and see his farm the the crystal the layer of the crystal of salt you may find on the surface of the soil and when we visited the farm we found this soil is very very alkaline then how to there is no drainage at all if there is no drainage how can we reclaim the soil if there is no drainage how can we drain out the salt so the salinity and alkalinity development take place because of the bad drainage poor drainage and poor quality of tube well water sometime poor quality of the 
वेल वाटर एंड दैट्स वाई दिस इज अनदर टेक्नोलॉजी आप सब सरपेट ड्रेनेज सिस्टम इफ we have to address the issue of alkalinity one should go for the subsurface drainage system last two years before chandrashekhar choudhary did it on the 3 acre and later on another 3 acre it has one i i told the farmers ki when you receive the first rain you tell me you collect the water drain out from the drainage pipe which is put up at 1 meter depth in the field and collect that water and give it to us you all will surprise to know the water collected from the drain pipe the ph of the water was around te, up to 10 and the ec was about 1.5 so that means this much of the soils they are draining out and the soil is reclaiming and soil becoming more fertile more productive and the farmers production cost come down because to maintain the quality of the fruit to maintain the productivity if there are huge the the salt content is very high if the sodium content is up to the 2% and all other carbonate by carbonate content is very high then he need to apply more nutrient and he need to do very precisely so his cost come up but if you do the one time investment his cost come down the another important tackling the hot summer issue you know lot of problems are there we need to have banana throughout the year we need a plant harvesting throughout the year but if harvesting is not done in throughout the year if planting is not done throughout the year how can we get banana throughout the year and that's why when dr uma ma'am dr silver rajan were visiting jalgaon frequently in 2003 4 5 they may they were seeing the plantation was only in the month of june july august but nowadays our farmer they are planting in the hot summer also so to tackle this hot summer issue farmer is planting such kind of sunhem when the sunhem come up into that sunhem sunhem shed they are planting the small tiny sapling sapling and the sunhem the water evaporated from the sunhem leaves that another issue it create the microclimate it improved the humidity at the best level of the soil and it avoid the severe shock to the banana sapling so that farmer can plant the banana in the hot summer also this is another important technique you know how, how our smart farmers are very smart they need not they have not planted any sun hemp or nothing like that they planted banana they cut the leaves from the standing standing garden they put up one uh, stick over there and put the cover on it because by the time the root get set up in the soil root get established plant get established in the soil if this kind of uh, mechanism this kind of shelter provided for one week they can avoid the mortality and the plant can establish very easily within a week so this way we have to tackle what farmer is facing and we have to provide him a smart technology farmer friendly technology precise technology by which he can grow the bananas this is another crop cover which also create lot of humidity inside which also protect the plant from the hot waves and plant crop stand will be well in the month of hot summer this is the uh, uh, model which you have seen the side garden it is having good uh, shed net over there to maintain the microclimate inside the garden and the sun hem to maintain the microclimate inside the uh, during the sapling plantation as doc stop talked about the mulching but another important issue of mulching i will tell you sir what we observe in mulching so when when the water is salty when the soil ph is very high and when there is a hot summer hot winds are there hot waves are there and in hot summer once the uh, the hot air enter into the garden so it evaporate the surface water and again the salt get crystallized in the rhizosphere and that salt krishna krishna salt get uh, form a cover on the roots it form coating on the roots and again it gives the salt damage to the root system and that's why once we started the use of mulching on raised bed and it protect the uh, bed from the hot waves and it avoid the soil surface evaporation and that's why it helps to maintain good microclimate 
also it avoid uh, it avoid the accumulation of the salt because of the evaporation losses of the water and that's how it could help us to bring the garden at least one month har one month before harvest so we can reduce the crop cycle by this small small technologies this is uh, another important issue as we discuss about it ki how micro irrigation plays very very important role as our nrcb always talking about it ki how the micro irrigation fertigation and tissue culture has a impact on productivity improvement and how the country in last 20 15 20 years the country's production how it has doubled from 16 million ton to 30 million ton and from 3.6 lakh hectare to 8.3 lakh hectare how we have reached to this level with consistent maintenance in the productivity improvement quality improvement this is all efforts and technological intervention in the field of bananas as we know because of this technology how we tackling the issue of covid 19 also because all the tissue culture industries they have been suffering a lot because of 40 days lockdown 50 days lockdown so production has suffered a lot and that's why there is a lot of delay in supply plant to the growers so but we one day also will find out ki how can we keep a buffer stock in the laboratory and how can we tackle such kind of a pandemic in case of this uh, pandemic also how the technology help us and that's why how we reduce the hardening time and that's why how we enhance the growth how how we improve the root ball in the pot so that's how we can manage the supply we can manage the growth and hardening of the sapling so this is how another uh, important issue of uh, uh, important subject to be discussed which is the important component of precision farming in the country as uh, ma'am knows well government of india started pfdc precision farming development center in various uh, agriculture university and nrc's location to make this technology very popular so with the help of drip irrigation how we can overcome this extremity issues of weather you know well this is the data from jalgaon and if you see the humidity in the month of uh, march april and may it comes down to 24% 23% uh, uh, humidity come down 25% 37% march 27% so the climate is completely dry and the temperature reaches to 46 degree centigrade 47 degree centigrade 48 degree centigrade also wind velocity is there sunshine hours are around 9 to 10 in the month of summer so there is a hot summer very bright sunshine and very low humidity now you can tell me sir what this banana sapling this banana plant will tell us because it is not at all conducive for the cultivation of banana for growth of bananas and that's how how we ma manage this issue how we address this issue with the help of modern technology with the help of precision so one of the part is drip irrigation with the help of drip irrigation here you can see this is again jalgao 19 uh, 2019 data if you look at to the april so the 11.8 mm evaporation you see the high how the evaporation is there you go to any country you go to philippines the evaporation rate is not more than 7 mm if you go to costa rica it is not more than 6 7 so you go to any country because the temperature over there is not exceeding more than 37 38 degree so how can we tackle this so for, to tackle this issue we need to have a technological intervention you look at here so what is the refill gap when you see how the when our science says our international scientists says ki if there is no 2000 mm of rainfall you can't grow banana over there but here 700 mm the rainfall and that's how you can see in the in the month of february no rainfall march no rainfall june 174 rainfall and 142 mm the evaporation so the gap is around 32 so we need to fill up this gap 
so we need to maintain the soil moisture and to maintain this soil moisture here it, in case of july 194 mm rainfall but evaporation to the monthly evaporation is only 95 that means we need not to apply water there is enough moisture in the root zone look at to here this is the scenario we show how the rainfall pattern is there and how the evaporation pattern is there and that's why micro irrigation water application is very very important because all of you know banana does not withstand water stress it is very very sensitive to the water stress and that's why this kind of micro irrigation system with the centralized uh, uh, filtration system centralized nutrition system need to be installed and nowadays this become a tailor made system if there is one acre of banana even then we provide one acre drip irrigation for him but over a period of time we need to have a precision and this is what we need the precision now the banana grower Uh, by grace of god and by grace of technology they are doing well and now if you see there are around 20 25 automation in solapur around 50 automation in jalgaon around 25 30 automation uh, in kolapur district around 10 15 automation like barwani 5 10 automation in baranpur so how the automation help us the automation is helping us for the precision scheduling of irrigation and precision scheduling of uh, fertigation so this control panel is over there so this controller is having the capacity one controller can control 12 valves so depending on the water availability depending on the pump discharge you need to have the calculation how much plant you can put up on well hall and so that automation in the coming days playing very very important role for bananas so this is nutri care shed nutri care model which is we are using for the fertigation so look how we do the fertigation these all these three are the fertigation time so we need to know this is the as you all knows the fertigation scheduling nutrient requirement our friend dr jay baskaran is sitting over there he always uh, guiding and telling us you this kind of changes we need to do we do changes accordingly and this kind of fertigation tank where the stock solution is prepared and it's a very simple system because banana require nutrition on every day as we require nutrition on every day so nowadays 25 years we did very well now this is the time to change ourselves and to adopt the precise technology like fertigation automation so this tank is provided with the liquid solution the fertilizer solution depending on the suction rate this nutri care is around injecting 400 liters per hour to 1200 liters per hour there is a nap you can maintain you can manage the suction ratio and accordingly say for example in this 1000 ton uh, liter of tank if you put around 120 kg of urea and if you are injecting for not more than 20 minutes even then you can apply the 6 kg of urea per 1000 plant on per day basis every two days alternate basis or on per day basis so that those calculations are very easy we have to prepare the a stock solution and we have to consider the injection ratio and how much quantity we are injecting how much water we are applying and accordingly we can inject the fertilizer solution so that the required quantity of nitrogen phosphorus potassium magnesium and calcium we can inject into the root zone as our friend dr ravi was talking about this in nowadays if you go to the ramthal or if you go to any latin american countries or you go to the israel and turkey everywhere you may find even in australia observe and companies doing well in the automation so you find this this all sensor based automation so if you have different field you will have automation at one point and the sensor are in the different field so that the irrigation system can be run with the help of the Uh, say, uh, with the help of the antennas and that give signal to the irrigation module uh, controller and you can do the irrigation you can do the fertigation this is what another important technology now we are applying the water depending on the evaporation say for example today the evaporation is 7 mm so we need to apply that much of water so uh, say if the evaporation in the month of summer it is 11 
11 mm. So we have to apply around 32 liters of water per plant in the month of summer here in Jalgaon. Even if the evaporation is 7 mm, we have to apply around 18 to 20 liters of water per plant. So depending on that, one way we are managing the irrigation with the help of evaporation. One way my small farmer is managing on his own, uh, own experience. If he see if there is a dry zone is created, if the soil is drying, he is applying the water. If the so he take the soil, make the ball, and he throw the ball. If the ball is, ball is breaking down, that means the moisture is enough. If the ball is not breaking down, that means the moisture is excess. So he's not applying the water. But nowadays, in coming days, we need to have a tensiometer uh, uh, system over there. If we put up the tensiometer in the root zone, so with the help of tensiometer reading, the automation controller can give the command whether to irrigate or not to irrigate. If the tensiometer is put up at the, uh, the depth of 40 centimeter, which is the rhizosphere, the banana roots are active, you know well, from 15 centimeter to 50 centimeter is the active root zone. And if we put the tensiometer at 30 centimeter depth, and if the tensiometer shows us 20 kilopascal reading, that means there is a water stress is created in the root zone and the system uh, will inform that if the banana requires the irrigation. So this way we should have this kind of double row system, double line system to reduce the, uh, to reduce the irrigation time. And if we have this uh, double line system, many farmers, if you go to Raver, if you go to Baranpur, you, you go, go anywhere, you could go to Gujarat, just they are running drip system for three hours, four hours, for sake of their uh, satisfaction, whether the banana require uh, water is needed or needed, not needed, whether the rhizosphere is full of water, in spite of this, they are irrigating for three hours, four hours. But if my farmer, he install a drip irrigation with the dripper spacing 40 centimeter, dripper discharge for LPH uh, liter per hour, and if it is a peak water requirement of 30, 32 liters, he need to drip irrigation only for 60 minutes, on, uh, only for 120 minutes, that means only for two hours. But if you don't have the control system, how can you maintain the aeration? How can you maintain the optimum moisture in the root zone? You, you need to fill up the water, whatever is evaporated. That only we need to refilling on the every day so that the water, the moisture contained in the root zone remain constant because banana root does not withstand banana root get damaged if there is a thick one drying and if there is a, a water stagnating condition. So in such a condition, also Dr. Saab talked about the nutrition management and you know why, why we need, a, uh, why there is a important for nutrition in, a, in banana. As you know well, if we are planting around three, uh, 5.5, 1.65 by 1.65, this is the spacing in Jalgao. So in Jalgao condition, 3,676 plants have been planted in one acre. And if you see the biomass produced by banana sapling, banana plant, the underground and above ground biomass production, if you look at to this, it is around 635 tons of biomass is produced over a period of its life, life cycle. And that's why the nutrition plays very, very important role in banana because the biomass production in banana is very high. Nowadays, everybody is talking about the uh, export and uh, quality management system. You know, in last, uh, it's a very good thing for the country. Last year, there is about 14,000 tons of banana have been exported from, from here. So every year, the, the export quantum is increasing. And that's why we need to have a quality production. And that's why nutrient management, precise nutrient management, with the help of automation, with the help of fertigation, is very, very essential. This is how this is for many of our UP farmer. Yaha UP ke bohut sare kisan bhai join huye hai. Bohut sare logo ne hame phone karke bhi pucha hai. Abhi hap dekhi a picture. What it is? It is not ye koi disease nahi hai, ye koi bimari nahi hai, ye koi isko sunburn hua nahi hai, kuch bhi nahi hai. But this is the chilling injury 
जो कि हमारे यूपी के फार्मर बिहार के फार्मर ओडिशा के फार्मर सफरेंगे लॉट इस प्रकार का यदि उनके खेत में ये स्थिति 15 नवंबर से जन, 30 25 जनवरी के बीच में ये स्थिति निर्माण होती है तो ये हमारे किसान भाई इस इशू को टैकल कर सकते हैं इफ दे हैव ड्रिप इरिगेशन एंड इफ दे हैव फर्टिगेशन क्योंकि वहां जब टेम्परेचर पांच डिग्री पे जा रहा है तो पोटास भी वाटर सोल्यूबल नहीं है नाइट्रोजन भी वाटर सोल्यूबल नहीं है फास्फोरस भी वाटर सोल्यूबल नहीं है बिकॉज फर्टिलाइजर सोल्यूबिलिटी डिपेंड ऑन टेम्परेचर जितना टेम्परेचर डाउन हो रहा है उतनी न्यूट्रिय सोल्यूबिलिटी डाउन हो रही है और ऐसे ही स्थिति में फार्मर उसको पानी नहीं दे रहा है उनके मन में एक डाउट है कि यदि हम पानी देते हैं तो हर ठंड ज्यादा लगेगी लेकिन ऐसा नहीं होगा यदि यूपी के फार्मर बिहार के फार्मर ओडिशा के फार्मर और रांची के एरिया के फार्मर यदि इस बात को समझे और हम यदि उसको वाटर मैनेजमेंट एंड न्यूट्रिशन मैनेजमेंट यदि हम न्यूट्रिय का अपटेक फर्टिगेशन के माध्यम से बढ़ाते हैं मॉइस्चर जड़ों की कक्षा में मेंटेन करते हैं यवरी डे पानी देते हैं तो रूट जोन विल बी वार्मर और रूट जोन वार्म रहेगा तो न्यूट्रिय अपटेक बढ़ेगा और हमारे यूपी के किसान भाई के इशू सॉल्व हो सकते हैं सो हाउ टू हाउ टू टैकल द इशू ऑफ क्लाइमेट दिस काइंड ऑफ चिलिंग टेम्परेचर इन द स्टेट ऑफ यूपी हम इस तरह से इसको सॉल्व कर सकते हैं चिलिंग का इशू हम सॉल्व कर सकते हैं देर आर यू नो इन इन एक्सपोर्ट द चिलिंग इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड दैट्स वाई बाय हैविंग सच काइंड ऑफ मॉडल हैविंग टू लेयर ऑफ स्कर्टिंग बैग एंड प्रॉपर न्यूट्रिशन इरिगेशन एंड क्लाइमेट कंट्रोल इन द गार्डन वी कैन टॉकल दिस इशू द अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट इशू इज ऑफ सलाइनिटी यू ऑल नोज वेल सर All panelists, because all of them are great scientists, and they know he knows well that how we are facing problem in in the field of banana. Because what what it says, when when the when the pH is very high, then there is no nutrient uptake, and that's why we uh, started using phosphoric acid to meant to provide the phosphorus as well as to maintain the soil pH. So. Oh, why the how to improve the nutrient efficiency with the help of precise management you see with the help of conventional system it is only 50 60 and 30 40% uh, efficiency but if you see solubility but the water soluble fertilizer 90 95% you may uh, solubility look at to this many of our gujarat farmer what they say गुजरात के हमारे किसान भाई बोलते हैं कि सर अभी से हम फर्टिगेशन शुरू करें तो सारा तो फर्टिलाइजर जमीन में जा रहा है लेकिन हमारे किसान भाई मानते नहीं है ये ट्वेंटी सेवंथ डे में सैपलिंग का रूट का लेंथ आप देखिए ऑन एन एवरेज इट हैज टू ग्रो बाय टू टू थ्री सेंटीमीटर अ डे बट यहाँ तो आप देख रहे हैं ये करीबन पांच सेंटीमीटर पर डे से बढ़ रहा है तो इतना अच्छा यदि रूट जोन हमको निर्माण करना है तो हमें डेली बेसिस पे न्यूट्रिशन देना है ये आप देखिए ये आपने तमिलनाडु के फार्मर का फोटोग्राफ है नियर टू कोयमतुर देखिए कितना बढ़िया रूट सिस्टम डेवलप हुआ है एंड दैट्स व्हाई इफ द राइजो स्पेयर इज इन थर्टीन फोर्टी सेंटीमीटर तो फॉर दैट पर्पज वी नीड टू इम्प्रूव द वाटर न्यूट्रिय इफिशियंसी और न्यूट्रिय इफिशियंसी को यदि बढ़ाना है तो हमारे को फर्टिगेशन के सिवा दूसरा कोई पर्याय नहीं और इसलिए जब हम फर्टिलाइजर मैनेजमेंट की बात करते हैं जब हम रेसबेड की बात करते हैं तो ये रेसबेड के लिए एक अलग सा लास्ट दस साल से इसके ऊपर काम किए हैं आप आपका इनपुट इसमें बहुत है डॉक्टर साहब तो जो एसएसपी है जिप्सम है निमके है वर्मी कॉम्पोस ये सारा जो मिक्सर है ये तो पाटिल बाई डिफॉल्ट यू आर शिफ्टिंग टू हिंदी Yeah. So we not we need to do the bed preparation with all the manures and fertilizers needed to be added to be in the bed, and then the uh, uh, we will have the uh, lateral over there, and afterwards we can go directly to the nutrition management. Why nutrition management is important? Because the total fertilizer cost, nutrient cost, is about the forty percent of the production cost. and it is labor cost is around 38% if fertilizer cost is input cost is so high and labor cost is so high so we need to think about it and we need to go to the 
automation we need to go to the uh, go to the uh, modern technique precise technique iot and that's why i was talking about this for the up farmer ki you look at to this if the temperature come down how the solubility come down you look at to the potassium nitrate if you look, if you potassium chloride potassium nitrate 133 g only whereas 20 uh, 20 degree centigrade it is 200 g and that's why how to maintain the ph in the root zone and that's why with your help ma'am and with your support we are working since last 25 years now this fertigation schedule in which the phosphoric acid is included and with this method where at every fourth day injecting phosphoric acid when we started the injection of phosphoric acid with the nitrogen phosphorus and potassium the the field was having 8.67 uh, ph and after fourth month we did the analysis and it has come down to 6.5 6.6 because because you all know well the nutrient availability for banana if you look at to this table the nutrient availability from 6.5 6 to 6.5 6 to 7 it is possible boron magnesium zinc every all nutrients are available but if you go to raver ma'am it is 8.5 if it is 8.5 in raver if it is 8.5 in baranpur 8.5 in barwani so how the nutrient will become available and then the grower cost is goes on increasing because to get the export quality he is keep on adding the nutrient and the nutrient cost goes up very high so instead of adding more nutrient how to minimize how to lower down the soil ph and how to improve the nutrient uptake i think this is very very important for today's banana grower so that if they use the phosphoric acid well if they use organic acid which is not available in our country but the grower outside uh, if you go if you take an example our problem is different and our friend miguel dita who is staying in in brazil his problem is different if you go to belez horizonte pirapora and fortaleza the the soil ph is 5.5 and they need to add lot of dolomite and improve the soil ph our problem is how to lower down the soil ph so by using the phosphoric acid water soluble fertilizer the farmer can reduce the you know, so ph in the rhizosphere because reducing ph all around, uh, throughout the land in a 1 acre 1 hectare or the piece of the land entire soil it is very very difficult because you know dr g k jende <coughs> was the soil chemist at padegao research station and i happened to meet dr g k jende sir who is no more today and he told me mr patil to bring this padegao soil from 9 10 ph to 8 ph it took 35 years for me so how difficult dr j baskar knows well and that's why this kind of fertigation schedule and the the question of temperature maintenance because you know if we are not adding sufficient quantity of nutrient we are not going to tackle the extremity of the climate temperature issue this is the uh, analysis report which is not at all much with 9.62 this is the ph of 9.62 where we have planted banana and this is that soil but uh, for the benefit of all the ph 9.62 was because of the calcium carbonate but the soil was sandy so the extension worker like us if he look at to the soil and if he knows if the soil texture is will support us and then only we can dare to put up the banana in 69.62 uh, ph you look at to the initial growth of the plant after automation and everything what after we did after that you see this is the growth of the same plantation and again now the plantation is ready for harvest we got the data from mr sudan sitanshu and he has got 30 kg average bunch weight for 21000 plants but my dear sir look at to this plant in jalgao when the temperature goes to 46 degree centigrade when there is a moisture loss and when the ph reaches to 8.5 when the salt become toxic to the plant you see the physiological death of the midrib this is the physiological death of the midrib 
though the entire leaf lamina is white is green but you look at how the midrib become brown and after rain if you look at to the lamina lamina is again green but the midrib is completely black this is only because of the physiological shock because when temperature goes up the banana plant don't have that much of capacity to absorb the water as the th the evaporation goes up to 13 mm once or twice a day once or twice a day in the in a month this is every year we are observing and that's why if our grower if he keep on putting nutrient keep on nutting water as per the requirement so this kind of bunches you that's may the part, find that's the part yes, is Yes, can, sir. Can, yes, can, you, can you be quick because there are a lot of questions, and I think we yes, sir, if we yes. spend some uh, discussion time, it would be better. Yes, so, sir. Little fast, two, yeah, please. Last two, three slides. Yeah. Please. Now look at to this one case. If one of my friend, if one of my my grower, if say, sir, you supplied me the farm plantation, you supplied me the plant which is already uh, genetically impure mutation or up type plant, both if we see to this one case. it looks like of type bunches but this plantation this plant sapling is genuine but all the deformity in the bunches are only because of the soil toxicity in the month of summer because the tube well tds become double become double the soil evaporation is very high the salt concentration in the root zone in the month of april and may goes on increasing and if there is a flowering time to this plantation in if grower is not providing sufficient quantum of potassium nitrogen at that point of time then the banana plantation shows such kind of uh, symptoms but i am confident i put the uh, second i put the return of this plantation and i i hope this banana sapling we show the deform bunches deform finger the return of this banana plantation will be normal because the bunch initiation and flowering time will be different it will not coincide with the hot summer and it will not uh, coincide with the dry summer it will the flowering will be in the month of october november and if we do like that we need to give that kind of uh, support to the grower ki this is what is the root cause for this so this is all small small thing add lot of value to his life this is only two three thing at the last i will tell i i hope dr uh, kumar will be talking on this this is how we need in our country lot of banana export has been going on but what we are doing dr sir we are all doing spot buying we are all doing field packing this is not the way the country cannot move ahead after certain limit because in international market all of us knows what kind of banana is needed and that's why we develop such kind of model this car this lorry is maintaining 14 degree temperature from field to pack house carrying the bunches in we in in three lorries develop into the cool uh, cool van and that carry the bunches from field to the pack house the bunches are received at the pack house and then wash it in the modern type of pack house so this is what precision our country need this is what every exporter need to do and this is the way only to go ahead because this year the philippine export philippine packing reduced by 40% and if philippines packing in 1990 1920 if it is reduced by 40% there is a big window for indian banana to enter and but we need to maintain this kind of international standard and if we are not maintaining this kind of international standard not making it very precisely then what kind of spot buying today we people are doing what kind of field packing people today we are doing this is not the way to go ahead because we have certain limit to do that because only with this middle east market can afford it middle east car market can accept it but last time our friend from uh, europe he was on uh, in the webinar so lots of demand is there in european market there is a big chance for us the russian market is big for us middle east market is quite good for us it is around 3 million tons of uh, bananas imported over there so if you see the last last month news only so the ecuador they increased their packing by 15% in last month why because there was shortage of banana in the field and if we people all 
exporter the grower the packer the everybody who involved in the banana trade if he look at to this if he maintain the quality if he go in a scientific way with the international model with the international requirement then i hope definitely what we all did in last 25 years the banana community the way the banana crop has come forward and the india now the people start respecting us in terms of bananas because we are leader in the banana production but they were laughing to us they were asking ma'am dr saab and us ki jo india is number one banana pro uh, producer in the world why not banana in the international market now we are addressing their question with the intervention of all scientific communities all sau or nrc plays very very important role in the field of banana not only from production up to export making trial up to italy and europe so with all these things if at each and every stage our farmer very precisely if he identify the problem if he address the problem if the technology is affordable to him Uh, definitely dr ravi was talking about it if if any grower do this in a scientific way and in a modern way though the input cost though the technology cost is higher but if there is a 5 kg of increment in the banana yield definitely the cost is recovered within 2 years so with this i remain over here and i thank you nrcb dr ma'am and everybody for giving us the opportunity to share our experiences with all our audience thank you so much sir thank you thank you thank you dr uh, patel for thank a wonderful uh, uh, lecture in fact it was very very informative and uh, all the banana farmers who are all attending uh, this get benefited and there are many fpos and F fpcs many many banana growers are here and uh, they would be getting um, benefit out of your talk and it's a really uh, good uh, uh, lecture and uh, uh, there are a lot of questions uh, for patil and uh, kindly visit uh, that question and answer then you can answer there actually uh, meanwhile i will uh, before uh, question answer session at the end i request uh, dr kumar uh, dr kumar uh, is the uh, principal scientist here at nrc banana uh, working for the past 26 years uh, at nrc banana Uh, 26 years uh, is uh, having exp expertise on banana uh, he is uh, again uh, a horticulturist uh, did phd at annamalai uh, university and did his uh, masters at tamil nadu agri university he has got a vast experience on production technology and he is again uh, one of our uh, extension specialist i would say who meets all the farmers and uh, everyone and transfers all those technologies which we developed at tenors banana so uh, uh, not dragging too much uh, i request uh, dr kumar to go ahead with the presentation please share your slides dr kumar hello dr kumar I think that Kumar is not here. That Kumar is here. That Kumar. That Kumar, you have to unmute. That Kumar, you have to unmute, please. That Kumar. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, oh, we, we are waiting for you. Please. Yeah. Oh, you can go ahead, please. That uh, you could see the slides. Yeah, yeah. Slides you put. Where is your slides? Let's come in. Yeah. Put put that uh, full board. Slide board. Full screen board. Are the animation board thing? Yeah. Huh. Please. Yeah, that's what. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, I don't know whether should I uh, continue my lecture. Or I have to uh, go for uh, what up thanks. Because my no, no. previous speakers, Dr. Balamohan and uh, 
and uh, that kb patel they cover the entire thing which is uh, uh, to be uh, told by me early they both of them are uh, very experienced dr balamogan as my teacher and uh, uh, kb patel kb patel as a very good friend of mine and uh, very vast experience umar yeah good show go to the slide show on yeah, top slide show top top next next top. next Absolutely. next to next notes pay or oh, next oh, yeah, yeah just not not sort mm -hmm. come to next 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 yeah. next oh, 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 yeah 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 okay. yeah yeah thank you yeah so this is a topic uh, uh, chosen almost we all all three of us are talking on the same topic precision farming technology for enhancing the productivity and also profitability in banana and uh, many a uh, farmer he has asked me when i sent him uh, 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 the invitation he has asked me so what is uh, precision farming so many farmer might have uh, known by this time so precision farming is a information and technology based agriculture management system actually it is to identify the variability analyze and manage the site specific specific that is spatial and also the temporal variability within the fields this has to be done for optimum profitability for sustainability and also for protection of environment with five hours actually the initially it was only four hours that is the right time we have to give the uh, inputs in the right time the right amount at the right place and at the right manner but we have to also be very uh, careful about the choosing the right source so these are the five hour rights if you do everything as per the schedule as per uh, the need we are uh, into the efficient farming again the precision farming term or the precision agriculture it is capturing the imagination of many people that shows the attendance there are more than uh, around 500 people who are participating in this because those people who are involved connected with the production of food production of feed and fiber they are very much uh, eager to know the precision agriculture it is because the precision agriculture offers promise to increase the productivity decreasing the production cost and minimizing the environmental impact of farming so that is also very very important we have to minimize the impact of farming on the environment the precision farming it requires the system approach to e reorganize the total system of agriculture towards we have to go for low input we have to enhance the efficiency for high efficiency in order to sustain the agriculture 11 pages more so these are uh, the basic steps of uh, precision farming first we have to assess the variation of spatial and uh, temporal variability we have to manage the variability uh, using the techn right technology and finally we have to evaluate the techn uh, the technology on what is the impact on, uh, on the economic benefits to the farmers uh, and to the community everything so these are the technologies of uh, precision farming remote sensing gis gps as dr balamone has said it is a soil testing is also required we need to have a yield monitors and this is a variable rate technology is also very important for uh, uh, giving the inputs at the right uh, time and uh, uh, quantity and we uh, the uh, crop modeling everything has been told automatically it should be controlled by automatic control as it was told by mr kb patel we need to have the automatic control so the precision farming provides a tool to apply agro inputs according to the need of the sub field at a very small field level we need to have the technology the so that we can save the inputs this saving made with these variables can be fairly large for the farmer so precision farming certainly an exciting and is bound to change the face of the agriculture whether uh, and uh, is it affordable to the indian farmer of course the scope is very limited in the near future so uh, here is a example how a, a farmer can manage 50000 of acres with precision farming technology he need to have a tractor uh, mounted with a uh, lot of uh, technologies uh, he has to just push a button in the tractor he has to turn on the gps so if you turn the gps it will take you exactly to the location with the one meter precision where there is a variability where there is a need for uh, water where there is a need for fertilization or if you if you touches another button of uh, g uh, you will get a lot of gis maps you will again you can spot the 
there is a moist or eroded soil and other factors limiting the plant growth by uploading the remote sensing data which is uh, uh, which we uh, got the previous day it shows the crop status so having all this data if we sense uh, upload data to the onboard machine the machine will take care of everything it automatically regulates the application of fertilizer fertilizer pesticides and all these things exactly at the right amount at the right place so the farmer can uh, sit back and enjoy the right saving the money because the machines will do most of the work if a farmer could able to do all these things congratulations uh, congratulations to him he is one among the new generation of precision farmers but the affordability to the indian condition is a question mark here so these are obstacles actually stood for adoption of precision agriculture in india again our culture and the perception of the users again the very small farm size around 0.5 hectares uh, that is another obstacle the lack of success story in the country we don't have any success story in the country compared to the european and american countries our success stories are very limited or we can say this name again the cropping systems is uh, also very heterogeneity and uh, there is also market imperfection again the another problem is that land ownership many of the lands are being uh, leased out and the farmers are only the lease so it's uh, difficult for them to have all these facilities there is uh, no proper infrastructure again there is a kind of institutional constraint lack of uh, technical expertise is also another uh, obstacle uh, to adopt this precision agriculture in the country knowledge and the technical gaps is also exist in the, uh, this thing again getting the data the quality of data the cost of obtaining the data is also very on high side it may not be affordable to a farm so uh, whether we can leave it as such not necessary the precision farming technology for a, a small farm now he can go ahead with the precision farming technology if not precision farming farming in uh, with precision just by taking a paper and a pencil that will do just he has to go around the entire field to record the site specific data whether it is a, a, maybe the growth related or the yield related just he has to go around the field he has to record the data if you, uh, Uh, where he has applied the, the, all the inputs are given in a uh, uniform way. Definitely, you'll find some track. It's where a lot of variation, the yield the variation, the growth, everything. So he has to identify the particular zones that yield more than the remaining areas. Then the next step he has to do is he has to collect the samples from the zones. Definitely, on analysis of the, the samples, he'll find the results uh, maybe on the opposite side. That is. the high yielding zones may be relatively low in fertility and the low yielding zones may be relatively high in fertility this may be due to the difference in the uptake of the nutrients the fields whichever has yielded a high definitely the fertility of that particular plot will be low and wherever the yield is low high the fertilizer uh, and the fertility of the soil will be high according based on this the farmer can adjust the application of to which land i have to how, how much i have to apply how to apply all these things he can decide so these are the this a family they uh, own nearly 5 acres of land in uh, near uh, satyamangalam they don't engage any labor except for emergency situation if this up wherever there is a need to apply the fertilizers then only they will be engaging otherwise these two people husband and wife is venkateshwar and his family they move around the field morning 6:30 they start they go around and they are maintaining one acre of not even one acre just 90 cents of red banana and he could get 20 tons of red banana plants that means is if even if is uh, sold for uh, uh, 40 rupees a kg is uh, return is 8 lakh rupees 8 lakh rupees just for 90 acres of uh, sorry 90 cents of uh, red banana plant so precision land preparation both of the both of my previous speakers they said about this definitely before preparing the land after a crop of banana or any other crop the land requires a rest that is that is we have to leave it as a fallow is not simply simply leaving it as a fallow then we have to add sufficient quantity of good quality organic manures and we have to go for repeated and thorough plowing after that only we have to think of going for cultivation Here we can see uh, the world record holders of uh, 
late Mr. Guru Nathan and his son Mr. Loganathan, they could able to get 70 tons per uh, hectare. That is average is 70 kg of bunch they got from Thani area. The success of the way I said is organics are the oxygen of the soil. More the organics, better the soil and higher the yield. That is their experience. So this is uh, strict precision in selection of planting material. Already it has stored. We have to go for, uh, if it is a sucker plant, we have to choose a healthy uh, swar sucker. We have to go for a uh, pairing and parallel age. If it is a tissue culture plant, definitely we have to uh, look for the certification. It should be disease free. And this leads to uniform shooting and uniform harvest. And again, the tissue culture plants are uh, shorter in duration and it yields high compared to the sucker plants. But while uh, selecting uh, the tissue culture plants, the farmer should be very cautious. There should be a random check for nematode uh, infestation and also for abnormality of the plants, which has got some variation. So even at the time of planting, the uh, tissue culture plants will be having a root knot uh, infestation like this. So one has to be very careful. If he finds it, the proper care Prophylactic measure has to be taken before planting. So this is about the uh, plant population for different varieties. Already Dr. T. N. Balamone has uh, uh, told about this. So instead of uh, traditional planting, the identical planting, a pair row planting, where, where in which we can go get up to 5,200 plants per hectare, or even two suckers per pit or three suckers per pit, with a plant population of 4,600 plants per hectare can be uh, achieved. But here, for three circles per pit, the condition is that we have to use only the tissue culture plant. Then only the, all the three plants in a pit will be uniform in size. I mean, uniform in growth, uniform in clothing, everything will be there. The condition here is that there should be a minimum of 45 centimeter gap between the suckers within the pit. So this is a, a layout of the field. So with modified identity planting, we can get 30% more plant population. And with the wider row space being of uh, 12 feet between the rows, definitely we can go for mechanization. And again, the wider row spacing is ideal for uh, more intercropping. Instead of one intercrop, we can go for two intercrops and they can get additional income. Again, because of the wider inter row spacing, there will be a reduction in the drip cost, there will be saving of water and fertilizers. And uh, ultimately, the farmers will be getting 30 to 40 percent enhanced yield from the identity planting planted uh, fields. So, this is the initial cap uh, required to be taken uh, with the digital plants. And this is a root system. So, if you see the table, more than 85 percent, up to 90 percent of the roots are uh, located in the top 30 centimeter. So, in order to save the water, in order to uh, uh, save the nutrients, we have to go for a proper irrigation system. So when we compare the efficiency of the irrigation methods, so it is 30 to 40 percent for conventional irrigation, whereas under the drip irrigation, it is 90 to 95 percent precision. I mean, uh, water use efficiency could be achieved. And with the adoption of drip irrigation, we can cover the, uh, up to three times more area under drip irrigation. So this is already uh, Dr. Balamon said, said about the uh, daily drip irrigation schedule for banana at a different uh, growth stages, how much has to be, it starts from four to six kg per plant up to the peak of uh, 20 or uh, 25 kg per day, uh, liters per uh, day we have to give. Either it can be on a daily basis or it can be an alternate basis. And uh, this is the best for the precision farming system. Without drip, we cannot imagine precision farming. And here again, we have to maintain the optimum soil moisture at active vegetative growth and also the finger filling stages by maintaining the available soil moisture at the field capacity. So this again, the weekly fatigation schedule of only for uh, urea and uh, MOP. Uh, Mr. Patel has already included uh, the phosphoric acid. And again, there is a need to apply compulsorily the secondary nutrition, particularly the sulfur. So application of 30 gram of uh, veterinary sulfur at the fifth month is recommended for better growth, yield and quality. Again, the micronutrient needs can be uh, fulfilled by application of either the banana shakti or banana special at the rate of 2% uh, to 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th month after planting. Of course, soil application of fertilizer, whenever, wherever we go for soil application of fertilizers, 
we have to apply the fertilizers at 45, 60, and 75 centimeters away from the plant at the third, fifth, and seventh month after planting. So again, the centers have developed a very excellent uh, fertilizer tailoring equation. Uh, this thing it is available for almost uh, uh, half a dozen varieties, uh, commercial varieties. By using this, we can exactly calculate the nutrient requirements of the NPK, and we can save the fertilizer, and we can improve the uh, nutrient use efficiency. As this is another uh, important technology of denaveling and also bunch feeding. Here, uh, uh, the trails were conducted with robust and uh, an APO1, uh, feeding of uh, ammonium sulfate and potassium sulfate at uh, different levels. It has enhanced the, uh, enhanced the better uh, finger filling, uniform fruit size from top to bottom, and also increased the fruit size and also the weight. And again, uh, uh, the studies have shown that uh, the fruits are rich in all these nutrients here. Again, green manuring is also very, very essential, uh, this thing uh, for uh, uh, better uh, soil fertility ma maintenance. So one month after planting or immediately after the first monsoon, people has, they have to go for uh, denser copy showing so that that can be powered back, uh, that will uh, improve the soil fertility status. Again, it is a uh, very good against the uh, weed uh, control and it adds lots of nutrients and biomass to the soil. By going for a legume, uh, crop it adds 15 to 25 tons of green manure per hectare in addition we also get about 100 kg of nitrogen per hectare so mulching another important uh, uh, technology as far as banana is concerned for soil moisture conservation better uh, nutrient water use efficiency suppression of heat growth and uh, particularly the black polythene mulch it increases the uh, yield up to 40 percent uh, uh, with 40 percent saving in water so again, the farmer should data, go for integrated weed management. The first four to five months or up to six months is very critical period. If you leave the field without a proper weeding, there is every chance that the farmer may lose 50 to 75% of the yield. So they have to go for a monthly digging, monthly harrowing and earthing up till fifth month. Even you can mix it with a mechanical weeding, which is very effective weed control. Again, it also prevents the soil erosion. It improves the water holding capacity of the field. Then mulching, I already uh, uh, said about the uh, plastic mulching. Again, the organic mulch up to 20 centimeter thick is also found very useful for uh, the growth and better yield. So again, the management of data suckers. This is also very, very important because the data suckers will uh, start coming from the very first month or from the second month. So the farmer should know what are the unwanted suckers to be removed. So by proper uh, desuckering, it helps in crop regulation and it also helps in uh, improving the bunch grade. Most importantly, your yeah, experienced farmer he shares by proper uh, desuckering uh, practice, even the duration of the red banana, which is about 14 to 15 months or 16 months, he could get the first harvest of the bunch in 10th month. By 12th month, the red banana field is totally harvested. So this is an added advantage of this uh, uh, removal of side suckers. So he has to identify and remove, uh, remove or retain. Uh, he has to decide which one to retain, which one uh, has to be removed. Then he has to use the correct tools for desuckering. Because based on the size of the plant and the other sucker, he has to use the right tool. So here, if you see this, uh, this thing, he, he uses two sizes of uh, crowbar. So see the precision, the farmer, he himself has designed it. So initially I have to use only the smaller one. At later stage, I can go for the bigger one. So this is the desuckering practice being adopted. And even for desuckering, when we recommend the application of kerosene or the 2,4-D, the farmer, he applied and tried the uh, MOP on the cut surface of the, this thing. Within uh, 20 or 25 days, you can see the entire sucker is uh, this thing, not only because Again, the applied uh, MOP on the cut surface, it adds uh, potassium uh, nutrition to the plants. Again, intercropping, banana-based intercropping, we can go for all the leguminous vegetables. We can go for greens, and we can go for uh, flower crops like uh, marigold, sunnem, even yams, beetroot, carrot, anything, depending on the local market preference and the climatic conditions. Even in some areas, the turmeric and ginger are also found uh, very economical intercrop in banana orchards. So, propping again a very important uh, operation as far as banana uh, cultivation is concerned. A wind damage and lodging of the plants is a serious problem. 
if the wind speed is uh, around 40 or 50 uh, kilometers per hour it damages the leaves uh, thereby it affects the photosynthetic efficiency of the leaves again it also twists the crown portion of the plant a wind velocity of uh, more than 60 or 70 kilometers per hour it can destruct the entire uh, plantation so the farmer should go for a shelter belt or wind break even well before the uh, he takes up the banana planting this is very essential Otherwise, yeah, there is every chance he may lose his crop. Normally, the bamboo or castoreana uh, poles are used. Even eucalyptus poles is also equally used by the farmers to support the bunch. So, while supporting the bunch, the farmer should ensure that the pole is not touching the fruits uh, on the bunches, the fruits. Otherwise, there will be mechanical injury which will bring down the uh, bunch grade. Again, uh, in the recent uh, years, uh, 18 gauge steel wires are also uh, Use, there is also specially designed polyurethane ropes tied to a peg or even it is used to, to support uh, the, each plant from one plant to another plant uh, like that and vice versa. So this is a very cost effective uh, way of uh, propping the plant. Again, the, uh, and, uh, in the precision uh, farming of uh, banana, removal of male bodies is also very essential because uh, we can avoid the comp uh, competition between the fruits and the bud. Again, if you leave the buds as such, it will harbor thrips, uh, it will harbor the aphids, which will, which will affect the fruit appearance, it will bring down the marketability. So, timely removal of the male bud, that is a week or 10 days after the emergence of the lost hand, the farmer should go for uh, this male bud removal and also removal of the floral remembrance to uh, get a better uh, high, high grade bunches here. Again, the predictable wrapping this is also very, very essential. Because many farmers, they face this problem of uh, uh, sun, scorch, uh, sun scorching or sun scalding at the pedunculate region at the top of the uh, pedunculate. Immediately, it gets to some fungal infection. There is every chance the bunch may break down at the uh, pedunculate region. So, we have to use the uh, boot leaf or flag leaf to cover this uh, in a proper way. Again, bunch cover already it is taught about. Now, the attention is to go for um, uh, the poly uh, propylene uh, sleeves, now known polypropylene sleeves. Again, uh, there is a reduction in the maturity period, uh, 15 to 20 percent yield increase is there. You can see that we can use for any variety. In addition to the polypropylene or polythene sleeves, even the, for many farmers, uh, they used to go for uh, uh, covering the bunch with uh, dried leaves. You may uh, use two or three uh, this thing, particularly for red banana. The, the farmer says that if I go for a polythene or polypropylene, I'm not getting that red color. See, only I get this uh, good red color and good market price when I use that uh, banana leaves as a bunch uh, cover. Again, this impact of the uh, uh, potassium sulfate, and we can get 25% uh, additional yield by going for this uh, technology of potassium sulfate spraying at 1.5 or 2% spray. Uh, one week or 10 days after the emergence of the last hand, then within another 25 to 30 days interval, you have to go for the second spray. This will increase the bunch of, uh, fruit grade and the fruit size, increase the bunch of weight, and also gets 28% additional yield. Again, the tuning uh, is also very uh, essential, uh, this thing. Uh, so it, uh, if the field is uh, high in uh, nematode infestation, or if there is a problem of palm oil or pseudosum borer, if there is a fusarium build, or if there is an instance of banana seek virus, banana brachmus, and banana bunchita viruses, we have to, to not arrest the further spread. We have to, we should avoid going for a uh, retuning. We should not avoid retuning. We have to go for a crop rotation. Again, we can come back for uh, a banana after, after some time. So again, the maturity, already it is said, normally the grand line takes 90 to 100 days for uh, full maturity. For other varieties, it depends, it varies from 100 to 100, 120 days. Uh, we have to mark the uniform plants, as Dr. Balamon has suggested, uh, that the color ribbons can be used for uh, marking the uniform maturity bunches for us to the export market. Again, the stages of uh, maturity, it depends, 70% for uh, with uh, 42 to 46 uh, caliper, uh, this thing, uh, for uh, uh, export market, for distant market within the, the country, for nearby states, the maturity should be 80 to 83 percent. If it is meant for the local market, we can go up to 90 to 95 percent maturity. 
So this is the form mechanization. Even our uh, uh, NRC Banana in collaboration with the TNA, we have developed uh, such a, a cable wick conveyor. So it is going to be in the hands of uh, the cable wick and our mechanization. Uh, once we want to get uh, good success uh, uh, in uh, export uh, export the banana, of course, in future with the changing climate, we may have to we are we may be forced to cultivate our bananas under this uh, shape like this. So this is a visionary. Sri Bawarlal Jain, led Sri Bawarlal Jain, he is a visionary. Actually, he has uh, lit the lamp actually. But uh, these farmers, Mr. Durai Pandian, Mr. Paramasivam, he is Mr. Uh, Ujwal Chaudhary. And again, he is from uh, Uttar Pradesh. We can see this farmer. Even in the Uttar Pradesh condition, Mr. Burma, he could able to get a very excellent uh, batches of uh, this thing. And this is the couple I already have mentioned. So banana farming, uh, precision farming uh, requires a tractor mounted, all high tech tools and equipment and sensors. Whereas for our committed uh, farmers listed here, they are only a few drops in a version of committed farmers. For the vigilant farmers, you use their uh, legs and hands as a sensors and eyes as a GPS. Their experience and expertise as a variable applicator, they could enhance the yield and income from a, a, a hectare of banana so as to he can buy a tractor for himself. So that is even without precision, with all these uh, sophisticated equipments, with the committed this thing, with the personal care, they could be able to achieve a very high yield and very good quality banana, which is being exported to many countries, including the European countries. So if they continue to do that, definitely our India will figure in the uh, export map of the world. Thanks for the opportunity. So uh, the need-based input application should be preferred to achieve precision farming. So care each plant, each plant will care us. This is a concept of precision farming. This is my mobile number and uh, email ID. Once again, I thank uh, the organizers and all my friends who deliver talk with me. Thanks once again. Thank you. Dr. Silverajan. Moderator, I get really. I get a new one. Hello, hello, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Kumar, uh, for a wonderful lecture, and it's a very, very uh, nice one. Uh, you have covered A to Z of uh, the banana products and technology, and uh, you have incorporated where precision is needed, uh, where uh, the managements can be uh, made. And of course, there are a lot of questions on this uh, particular presentation. Around 115 questions have been posed by the uh, <laughs> people. And uh, fortunately, I'm happy that uh, 60 questions have been already answered. And uh, one question which was answered also, I don't know, uh, pick up because, yeah. Uh, it, this is for uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Balamogan, sir. Can plastic mulch be replaced by biodegradable natural mulch like jute agro, agro textile? Yeah. Whether uh, Balamogan, sir, is here? Sir, Balamogan, sir. I think Dr. Patil can tell. Can plastic No, mulch... Dr. Balamogan is here. He is here. Oh, yeah, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sir, Balamogan, sir. Balamon, sir. Then I, I, I think I myself can answer this question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> if you are, if you are able to afford do yes, 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 yes. Doctor Selvaraj, wait, wait. Yes. Could you able to hear me? Yes, yes. See, yeah. our, our organic mulch is the best option, but most of the times it's not possible for the farmers to adopt. Uh, say we are asking them to go for organic input. Uh, it's not possible for the farmer to give organic, essential organic input, say about 10,000 um, uh, I mean, I mean, 10 tons of uh, farmyard manure for 
every every cropping but say most of the times it's not possible by the farm because not they are not maintaining enough animals so thing is the easiest way is to go for plastic mulch the easiest way is to go for plastic mulch and if available they can also use organic mulch if available and as as rightly pointed out by dr uh, kumar they have to maintain the 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 depth in the sense say say about 2 or 3 inches i um, mean in height mulches are to be we need to spread so that uh, we can able to control the weed as well as conserve mulch okay a similar question another question sir uh, from scientific point of view we have not made measurements of the effect of mulching how the microflora changes due to mulching this is the so question it's a very simple simple so it's not necessary to measure it now any rise in temperature by 2 to 3 degrees centigrade in the soil flora or rhizosphere will enhance the activity of microbes that's all so it need not study about all those things no say when you mulch it the soil temperature will enhance even while when when you go for of course uh, decomposing of any organic material so soil temperature enhanced by 2 to 3 degrees centigrade will will help in increasing the activity of microbes so um, mulch is okay. definitely will help in increasing the activity of microbes thank in turn thank you sir so, thank, you. thank you sir this uh, butt injection there are lot of questions many many people have asked about uh, butt injection one thing for bunch uh, or called banana bunch feeding or mm -hmm. bunch uh, inje injection butt injection has been asked what do you actually inject in the bunch so there, here uh, it, it depends it depends there is no universal material uh, for for this particular purpose so it has to come from the buyer a buyer who is actually willing to export his banana to certain country he is one who has to decide what are all the treatments to be given then suppose if i inject at the end of the day if it is rejected of course there is no use so most of the activities most of the operations are market led rather than production led so if the if the buyer is asking the farmer to go for bunch cover it's better to go for bunch cover because buyer is very specific about it likewise in the injection no it, it is depending on the pest prevailing over there or this is prevailing over there and this is also again market led like if a trader is capable of selling whatever bunch is i mean given to him it's okay then if he is very specific about any uh, mean spots of course if if there is uh, thrips uh, i mean um, a feeding there at the end of the day and it should be very clear then accordingly we have to decide it's there is no i mean hard and fast rule to use it if market is demanding to give a clear bunch uh, i mean uh, for for them to sell so it, it all depends on the market uh, i mean demand thank you sir uh, uh, this is for ravi uh, the question is that uh, there are no gadgets uh, to monitor the nutrients in the soil and as you said can we monitor regularly and can we apply as you think your iot like npk monitoring the nutrients in the soil yeah yeah see actually as such uh, we know that uh, there is no gadgets to uh, as of now to uh, know the nutrient level but based on the ph and the uh, ec of that level what are the nutrients is uh, available to the plant one some part we can uh, measure next is the deficiency of the nutrients can be assessed through the capturing the images of the leaf color change even the leaf uh, uh, say for example mall formation and all those things so these things these images the capturing the images of the color and our thing we can uh, uh, we can uh, give the uh, what is that uh, uh, recommendation for the nutrient deficiency but as of now i think maybe in future we may expect some of the gadgets to assess it okay another uh, question to party i think because you have shown the chilling injury and all uh, one person asked whether they can grow banana in haryana is one question number two uh, another question is in north india locations the time and duration of low temperature and first days are to be considered in deciding the planting date how to decide the planting date and uh, how to avoid the chilling injury uh when you grow in haryana and uh, very north uh, northern states where chilling is a major problem actually in haryana the Ulana. area which is Ulana. adjacent to up 
uh, there are some farmers uh, from this year they are growing bananas but uh, basically where the frost injury is very high say for example if haryana they talked about sirsa which is adjacent to abohar they can't grow banana because there is a very high frost damage but the area which is adjacent to uh, ghaziabad or uh, near to delhi or lucknow it is possible secondly uh, for up what they are talking about this uh, uh, planting time see what happened in north india uh, the temperature fall down from 15th of november and the lowest temperature is by end of december or by first second week of january so the plant should reach at least 3 and 1/2 to 4 feet height in the month of november and that's why the planting time recommended for north india that is uh, first of uh, july to maximum 15th of uh, august uh, this is the planting time uh, uh, recommended for that but the grower like uh, uh, mr rai in uh, in mau char planting banana with the help of this modern technology with drip and fertigation even they planted late they can attain the height up to the november the major issue in up and north is to attain minimum 4 feet height before the chilling temperature then only that banana can be escaped from the huge damage to the plantation during december january thank you okay another uh, important question uh, uh, is that uh, whether government is supporting precision farming are there any subsidies for uh, taking up precision farming in banana i think kumar can answer or our director also can answer uh it's not specifically you have uh, uh, for pre precision farming alone but you have for different components there are different uh, uh, schemes available like uh, drip you have like protection uh, for different uh, items uh, the schemes are available you have to take all of them merge and then make it as a pre precision farming uh, specifically it has not taken out as a uh, uh, way of production system for banana uh so, if, if, if you permit me to talk to like in yeah, yeah, yeah. yes sir please sir yeah i uh, say uh, now it's time for the government as well as uh, uh, i mean uh, i mean uh, um, institution like you know uh, nocb you identify few few pockets like say taini is a big pocket similarly a pocket cultivating not less than 5000 to 10000 hectares it, you can provide information to the farmers so on on a on a rental basis in the sense um setting a, 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 a precision farming unit over there providing information based on of course rental in the sense if somebody is willing to take the information to let them so it's high time uh, to find find out or identify a large pocket setting one such a precision uh, I mean farming I mean uh, equipments and providing the information based on the I mean rental basis so this is very important i say in say uh, to start with it, it need not be with one single crop maybe um, variety of crops which includes paddy banana things of that kind a complex and finally uh, if you if if you introduce this technology to the farmers probably by paying so now we are charging farmers say in insurance we are charging uh, some amount from the farmers likewise giving some amount i mean asking them to pay some and ultimately providing the technology that, that will be useful but this is right time to start one such by the government along with the institution uh, you have every other uh, facilities no infrastructures and all so uh, this is the right time uh, i mean com commodity crop can be easily i mean taken up of course the banana you 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 are the only one mean institution i mean i mean uh, taking all the uh, research and then all the solutions now so it is right time to uh, think about it along with some mncs suppose if some mncs are ready to i mean collaborate with you probably this is right time to start 
thank you sir uh, this is no, uh, just to add him that actually uh, this has been in mind the, uh, some activities are going on with respect to this uh, big data information platforms are being uh, roped in and uh, we also have a project uh, with another mnc as a consultancy project where we are trying to develop device uh, specifically for uh, water and nutrients i think in a year or so dr ravi along with another uh, uk based company we will come out with this kind of gadgets right. and large scale production will uh, uh, will enhance uh, uh, cost uh, cost effective gadgets like this yeah, yeah, thank, you. thank you sir yeah thank you sir thank you madam thank you sir and thank you madam this is the again ravi kuchin yes madam said uh, this is any simple tools for measuring transpiration mm -hmm. most people schedule irrigation based only on evaporation craft factor are there any simple tools measuring the transpiration is the question uh, to the ravi no uh, transpiration simple tool is only is a gravimetric method number one so that is you have to have a empty pot otherwise with one planks that uh, with the plants and uh, empty pot will give evaporation the plants with the pot will give evapotranspiration you have to uh, what you call uh, just detect from the evaporation you will get transpiration next is if you want to have little bit of sophisticated gadget there is a porometer is there so bore upon that uh, porometer will give both the stomatal conductance that the inverse of stomatal conductance is transpiration that's But, all uh, yeah thank you this another question is that uh, the three plants per pit uh, that is high density planting or uh, the question is how many acres uh, are there in the country uh, and is it this technology is being adopted in a larger scale this is question to dr kumar oh. mute mute dr uh, kumar dr. unmute unmute yeah unmute. Fine, sorry uh. yeah we can say it is around 2000 hectares in the country uh, as of now even in the states of kerala uh, karnataka even there are some farmers in andhra pradesh and pondicherry they are adopting tamil nadu there are many places uh, they are adopting 3 sectors per pit the only problem here is that they have to go for tissue culture plants as i said in my lecture they have to adopt this technology only with tissue culture plants in order to maintain the uniformity of growth under this thing always it will be very difficult if they give goes for uh, the conventional sector there will be variation in the growth and he has to go for some uh, cutting it back to avoid the problem if he goes for this thing definitely it, it can be a very good uh, a technology for the farmers with wider spacing mechanization double intercropping everything is possible so oh, thank you kumar uh, another important question is all your, the four presentations showed only the grand in banana bunches grand in field but we have got in a variety a variety a lot of diverse varieties in india why in precision farming we have not shown any of the our indian varieties was the question or whether we have not developed such precision farming technologies for these varieties is the one question uh, uh, again uh, whether another question is whether uh, variety uh, dependent package of practice is necessary for precision farming these are all the questions related to the varieties i think uh, Uh, that uh, that kumar can answer yes uh, but i have uh, shown even a uh, red banana and also rasali even wanted to share some uh, uh, neepu and bananas we have got technology for all the varieties there will be uh, some little uh, change in the fertilizer uh, nutrient management uh, schedule always it is one and the same uh, of course in future uh, this thing we can include the slides of other varieties we have developed the technologies for more than 10 or 12 uh, commercial varieties uh, uh, being cultivated in the country actually and uh, another important question is what is the area under precision farming of banana in india this is the question dr kumar what is the area under precision farming yeah uh, the almost all the farmers in peni in madhya pradesh maharashtra gujarat who are always taking care by being the whole day spending his time in the banana fields their fields are precision fields i can say otherwise none of the farmers in the country are using all those gis gps all this uh, uh, technologies uh, as of now actually it is very limited actually even uh, this uh, automation is uh, being adopted only in the big estates not in small fields actually thank you kumar and uh, <coughs> i think uh, the final question to dr patil uh, dr patil 
uh, the precision farming which is being followed in most of the developed countries and the precision farming being adopted in india are there any differences is the only final question can you please answer <laughs> basically briefly <laughs> very briefly yeah. <laughs> yes very brief. this is the final question <laughs> basically if you uh, look at the philippines banana even in costa rica honduras colombia banana the precision farming which is adopted in our country is better than those countries this is uh, one question if you look at to uh, the other countries uh, even in australia even the banana is in israel is in on very small scale but they are adopting the technology which is same or growers they are adopting only the difference is somewhere there is a, a tensiometer so the soil moisture is monitor that is the only difference one more difference where the soil water issue is there people are using ec and ph uh, maintain uh, automatic uh, regulator uh, machines that is the only difference but if you overall talked about the technology i think we are at a very good position across the globe in banana production technology thank oh you. thank you thank you <laughs> dr uh, uh, patel and uh, it's it's a wonderful i think before i am going uh, for a formal word of thanks the uh, remarks from our director uh, i request uh, to offer a remarks on this uh, webinar uh, to the uh, participants please madam Uh, before closing uh, let me thank all the panelists those who presented excellent presentations uh, i know the kind of diversity of uh, participants uh, spectators you have here and the kind of um, uh, uh, information uh, feedback coming uh, everybody appreciated this is what people are looking forward to in a way uh, people are asking whether precision farming is india is better than somebody some other country or somebody else is better than india but the question is in india wherever annual cropping system is there uh, each and every farming community and the families are involved in banana production they are in the field the, throughout the year so each and every uh, farm operations for production of banana is taken care only thing somewhere the gadget based or the technology based uh, Uh, gadgets are not available but still the uh, operations uh, followed by each and every one of them it is nothing less than precision farming so that way we are far ahead uh, in implementing uh, precision farming because we are uh, uh, large scale and number two is annual production system that too for grand in banana and question is that why you, uh, there was a question why all of you are focusing on grand in banana see Uh, more than uh, nearly 60 percent of our banana area is under grand name, and more than 65 percent of production is from grand name. And the rest of the varieties like um, uh, Malbo or uh, Telechakra Kelia, all these they contribute only five uh, to less than 10 percent for the whole production in terms of area and production. So that is why whatever we first try, we try it for the grand name and also extend it to other varieties. So that way, uh, technologies are available for. Uh, Uh, many commercial varieties in the india uh, in india that is almost uh, 12 commercial varieties we have technologies package of practices are available any time you can take care and uh, next question why precision farming is more important uh, we are all talking about uh, losing almost 20 to 25% of uh, whatever we produce uh, annually because of post harvest losses uh, so uh, if at all uh, the post harvest losses depends mainly on what kind of uh, quality banana you are producing if you produce poor quality banana definitely it will end up in spoilage and uh, you losing the quantum so now the focus is on uh, We uh, focus is on what we are trying to emphasize at NRC banana is. If at all you grow, grow quality banana. Don't go for uh, substandard bananas. So whatever you grow should reach the end user. That should be that is our motto. So when you want to grow good quality bananas, when you want to reduce the cost, uh, reduce the spoilage by twenty five percent, definitely there is a huge glut in the market. So and when you are growing good quality banana, then people instead of looking at the domestic market, they will start looking for. the export market already the trend has come up people have started looking for the export market they have certain codex standards for uh, exporting these bananas unless you follow this precision farming uh, each and every step precisely uh, giving the good quality banana is not 
possible. So precision farming becomes important uh, both in increasing the production and productivity uh, of uh, banana in the country. I am sure uh, you have you have uh, heard uh, uh, very good lectures, and each and every step has been very clearly mentioned. Uh, still, if you have any doubt, you can always write to director in rcb at gmail dot com. And I have also posted what are all the apps available, which are developed by NRC Banana. It's on production, protection, uh, general information, uh, value addition and export, even on general product, uh, general aspects of banana. I, everything has been covered. Please go download and go through it. Uh, still, if you have any doubt, you can always get back. Um, I thank all the panelists. I also thank Selvarajan for an excellent conduct and uh, conduct of this webinar and also moderating this session. Uh, now to Dr. Selvaraj, please. <clears throat> Hello, Raja. Dr. Hello, Raja. Mute, unmute, unmute. Our care, huh? Oh, thank you, madam. Yes, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, madam. Uh, yeah, it's now unmuted. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, this is a formal order. Thanks. I thank uh, director, you know. The precision farming was, uh, uh, director was telling that this is an important webinar. We have to give importance. Uh, yes, our team, export team, has done a precision farming for Nendran and Grand Nine, and uh, very nicely they exported to Middle East countries, uh, making a, uh, a precision uh, farming practices uh, has been uh, adopted in Thani and uh, uh, in other place. And those bananas have been taken for export to the area. So precision farming is very important to encourage the export as well as uh, a good market in the uh, domestic. And this was the uh, this has been given importance by our director. And uh, accordingly, we chosen the panelist uh, who had a good experience, Dr. Balamogan, Dr. Patil, and our scientists, Dr. Kumar and uh, Dr. Ravi. Uh, we picked up these panelists to share their experience. So I thank immediately they accepted all the panelists that the ball bouncer immediately he accepted. And uh, we had a good uh, practice session before uh, launching this one. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot, sir, for immediately accepting our request and uh, joining us for this webinar. And uh, Dr. Patil, immediately when I uh, sent a request by through our uh, director's mail, he immediately accepted and he said that he is ready to join. And in fact, he is very, very happy and privileged to join for this particular uh, precision farming as he is one of the experts in uh, India on uh, uh, precision farming. Uh, thank you, Dr. Patil, for sharing a, a vast experience to all our banana growers and uh, other uh, stakeholders. And I also thank our scientists, Dr. Kumar and uh, Dr. Ravi, thank you. for sharing their uh, knowledge in this precision farming. And in fact, as yes, director said, the IoT, IoT based uh, uh, technologies being adopted, uh, being now uh, with an MNC that Ravi and his team is working uh, to develop a IoT based precision farming, and which uh, uh, in coming years it will come as a technology from NRCB. And uh, I, I also thank Dr. Kumar to giving an elaborative lecture uh, on our uh, achievements, our NRCB's achievements on uh, uh, precision farming and the technologies which has been developed for multiple varieties. And I also thank all our scientists, especially Dr. Siva, Suresh Kumar, uh, many who gave uh, start uh, replying to every chat. The question and answer, they were keep on uh, answering there. So I thank them because it's very tough to do this job answering for every questions. And I also thank all the panelists uh, to answering the questions uh, by uh, uh, in the online uh, answering and also uh, giving a very good uh, replies to all the uh, live uh, questions and answer session. But we could not keep many participants to ask questions, though many people have raised their hands to ask questions. I could not uh, give chance for them because of the time. But now uh, the point is that we are going to conduct the next webinar on integrated pest and disease management, which is on 29th. All of you can join because there are many questions on this pest and diseases, uh, which we are not answered here. I answered that we are going to conduct uh, such thing. And another question is on export. And again, we are going to conduct an export of banana exclusively one session. So all of you can join and kindly disseminate this particular webinars of NRC Banana to all the banana stakeholders uh, so that uh, they can all join. 
and uh, yes our director said that we are going to increase the capacity to 1000 instead of 500 and uh, we will be live on this on uh, youtube and this is publicly available any time anyone can view the presentations you need not to ask the ppt of everyone you just go and it's publicly available or any time you can go and download and see the youtube uh, present, uh, presentations of all our panelists not only this precision farming but also value addition or any any webinar which we are conducting so i thank our uh, computer specialist here and uh, all the uh, technical people who supported to conduct this uh, webinar uh, very perfectly thank you very much again thank you all the participants all the panelists thank you the, the director and everyone thank you madam i am in this i close thank, thank, you. Yeah. thank, thank you. you thank you thank you very much thanks dr balamohan sir thank you thank, thank you so much sir. thank you sir thank you partner ji take care thank you thank you <laughs> thank you all thank you all sir thank you so i shall end this now nice